That was for you, Kev. Yep. Save the rebellion. Save, Save the, the trees. trees. Save the trees. <laughs> Save the trees. <laughs> I was so sick. Welcome <laughs> back to Kinda Funny Star Wars in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Star Wars universe. That was a moment, though. Remember the hype going into Rogue One? <laughs> that trailer playing over and over. And Woo! Remember that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Woo! That cool sound, that, that oh, alarm siren. sound effect. It, yeah, it made siren. it into the movie. That yeah. same siren you can hear when he's uh, killing the dude. It, like the. Uh, I think it's. I think it's like a siren they've used before. Yeah, it is. Because I feel like they, they, they did a really interesting touch with a lot of the sound effects right at the very, very end are the ones you hear right at the beginning of A New Hope. Mm -hmm. So like that, that where they're all like setting up and the thing starts cutting down. Dumb so, shit. Really cool stuff. I'm Tim Gettys. That's Nick Scarpino. Hey, we got man. Andy Cortez. We got Big Kev Dog himself, Ow. Kevin Coelho, Barrett Courtney over there on the boards. Uh, shout out to our Patreon producer, Al Tribesman, for coming in. Supporting us the only way that he knows how. The lone. Hunt. I, I finally saw that uh, that he changed his Twitter name to the Lone Tribesman. Nice. Oh, yeah. oh. He did it. Yeah. He did yeah. it, man. Nice. I imagine right now he's making some sort of rudimentary lathe or some sort of like weapon out of a tree. What's so a lathe? Go, I don't know. It it's was a, a thing that spins. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's a thing that spins wood. It's interesting. You know, uh -huh. a yeah. lathe spins yeah. wood. Cool. Sure. Carve it. Rudimentary. Yeah. I love it. It's a. I saw that line from uh, Galaxy Quest. I knew, I knew it. I knew I'd heard can that. You for, can you try to form some sort of <laughs> rudimentary lathe? Uh, Sam Rockwell. <laughs> so fucking good. <laughs> so good. You have a name. Do I? Let's do Galaxy Do I? Review, man. Dude, that movie's so good. <laughs> Dude, you can watch this show live on twitch.tv <laughs> slash kind of funny games. Hour. Or you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny, roosterdeep.com, or listen to it on podcast services around the globe. Just search for kind of funny reviews. Uh, where we are reviewing the Star Wars movies week in and week out in addition to the Mandalorian episodes every week. So that's exciting. Uh, so yeah, upcoming on Friday will be Mandalorian episode three. Get hyped. Chapter three. Chapter three. Titled. I can't You'll remember. have to wait and see. I can't remember. That's a, <laughs> that's a fun thing. Uh, today we're talking about Rogue One, a Star Wars story, released December 16th, 2016, directed by Gareth Edwards. Gareth Edwards is an English film director, film producer, screenwriter, cinematographer, production designer. Wow, he just does a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? I, Visual effects artist. I saw him give a talk at NAB one year for like because he got he got really famous because he did a movie with uh, Scoot McNary. Was it how you say his name? Scott McNabb. Scott McNabb. <laughs> yeah. Scoot McNary. That's Scoot McNary. He did that movie. Uh, I want to say Monsters. That was what it was he called? first gained oh, widespread yeah, recognition cool. for Monsters in 2010, yeah. an independent film in which he served as writer, director, cinematographer, and visual effects artist. He subsequently directed the 2014 reboot of Godzilla. Mm -hmm. I, I remember he gave a talk at NAB like a couple years after Monsters had come out. I think right when he had booked. Godzilla mm -hmm. and they, they flew him out there to talk because he had literally gone out with those two actors and just like figured out places to film. They had some stuff set up, but like there was just awesome moments where he was driving around in Mexico and he saw like like people like hauling stuff. And so he would film it, motion track it, and then put like old jet engines and stuff in there. Like monsters had attacked and these people had salvaged this stuff. So it was really cool to see him like giving that talk of like, this is how I use After Effects. And I was like, oh, I could be that one day. And I never was. Here you are. <laughs> Way better at After Effects than you should be. Oh my God. You're I so know, good right? at it. It's but crazy. He's, I mean, it's, talk about bootstraps, right? Like you, you go through the eras of people that, 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 did it all themselves. You got the Robert Rodriguez's, but Gareth Edwards is really up there with those guys mm -hmm. of just getting out there and like, let's just go get something done. And if you ever watch Monsters, it's a very simple film. It's really just about this these two people like walking across Mexico during this apocalypse hap like that's happening. But you don't really see them that much because they couldn't afford it. <laughs> but it's really well done. It's yeah. a really cool movie. I still haven't seen it. I've always wanted to. It's not like it's it's very low impact. It's not going to take too much out of you. But it's it's. I mean, it's it's Scott McNabb, so uh, you know, he's <laughs> a great actor. Yeah. I forget I forget who the actress's Scooby name is. I've, I've seen great. clips of like the special effects, and like I feel like they did a really good job for the small budget that they had because I mean, they look really cool. Yeah, I think then, he, I want to film. I, I want to say he used like this old school um, like lens adapter for the for the old Sony's called the Lettuce. Do you guys remember that? It was like this weird adapter. That you put in and then you it allows you to use an actual oh the thirty five millimeter yeah, yeah Kev we lens. had one for my for the handicam oh yeah for the yeah, Canon. yeah yeah, yeah. It's, like the the Wii, it's like the Wii U heart monitor like, <laughs> yeah. yeah there was like there were, we, we had <laughs> one we used to use them at, at IGN because you would uh, you would attach it to the real lens and then it let you actually have a lens that you could get more depth of field out of yeah. but it had like a mechanical part to it so it would like make a little noise <laughs> that would always pick up on camera which is really annoying yeah because this, this was before like DSLRs so like video cameras couldn't have like 
you camera could, lenses. So mm-hmm. you needed this adapter just to be able to have the Yeah, the, we got it stuck on there. We could never take it off. We did yeah, get it stuck. Yeah, you could use yeah, prime yeah. lenses. That was always that shitty zoom that was affixed and, to the And then camera. he killed Brian Cranston way too early in Godzilla. There you go. There Godzilla, you go. another one of those movies, though, where it beautifully filmed. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. It's just, I, don't think the, I don't think the actual image acquisition was the issue with Godzilla that I had. No. I just think it was a little too long, and it it relied too much on military. Aaron, bullshit. whatever his name yeah. is. Yeah. Ooh, I Aaron want Michael to suck Paul. your blood, or whatever he said in Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> that terrible accent that he did. Uh, the director, Gareth Edwards, also has a cameo, this cameo is the way. <laughs> as a rebel on uh, the Tantive, I, Tantive 4. Uh, he's the one that frees the ship to allow it to escape Darth Vader. Oh, so oh really? Cool. Yeah. I thought he had, didn't he have a uh, cameo in The Last Jedi as well? He also he did as well. That's right. cameos yeah. in The Last Jedi, uh, which we'll talk about next week. Uh, and Sorry, there's a trade. Spoilers. No, it's, that, that's fine. Uh, that's a trade where Ryan Johnson cameos in... Rogue One. I would have so cut they, him out. They traded there. He was uh, I was like, you got it, dude. Don't worry about it. And then when it came out, oh, I wish you couldn't put you in there. <laughs> he was, he was uh, one of the dudes that did the the Death Star. Like the the, the two guys when the Death Star shoots. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I would in love the giant that. Full helmets. Yeah. Um, so that, that was the director. Uh, this is also the first Star Wars movie that uh, famous friends of ours have had a part in. Uh, Paula Gallagher. Before right. she was Paula Coelho, animated an X Wing or two. Two X Wings in the two background X-wings, of one man. scene. It's wow. so What's crazy. Better than one? Yeah. Two. two. Pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Not yeah. going to lie. That's so wild. Yeah. yeah. Be able to, to be. To, we went to the, the, not the premiere, but like early screening for the ILM people. And yeah, everyone going nuts seeing her name in the credits was like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah, so cool. Uh, but the big one, obviously, Gary Witta. One of the writers of this movie. Yeah. Unbelievable. How, cra- how crazy is it? Like, I think it's like the third like uh, little p- credit, name, credit yeah. yeah, that we see is like Gary Witta's name up there, right next to uh, the, the Noel guy. That well, mm-hmm. more importantly, though, like, he did. It. So obviously, writing on a movie like this is a huge accomplishment. But Gary laid the foundation for it. He did the story. Yeah. So he was he was, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they approached him and they're like, we want you to actually write the base foundation story of this. And then the other screenwriters came in and did the actual screenwriting. So there's a ton. Uh, there's a lot of this is like the first Star Wars movie that really kind of hit points of like a lot of trade offs and a lot of like multi people coming in. Passing and, the, and the baton. Passing the baton, yeah, both yeah. writing, directing and all that. So I, I want to like, go through some of it because it's pretty interesting. John Knoll, a visual effects supervisor to the Star Wars prequel trilogy and also just kind of visual effects mm-hmm. mastermind. Yeah. Uh, very important dude in that industry. Uh he pitched the idea as an episode of the unproduced series Star Wars Underworld that we were talking about recently for The Mandalorian. And uh, in 2014, or around the time when Disney was acquiring uh, Star Wars, he went to Kathleen Kennedy. He's like, I want to do this. And uh, that's what Dude, it's so the crux awesome, of the, the anthology movies even happening, which is really cool. Uh, and then in May 2014, Disney announced that Gareth Edwards would direct the film and Gary Whitta would write the script. That October, cinematographer Greg Frazier revealed that he would work on the film. In January 2015, it was revealed that Whitta had completed his work on the script and would no longer be with the project. Simon Kinberg was considered as a replacement, but later that month it was released that Chris Weitz had signed on to write the script for the film. And then in March 2015, the title was announced. In May 2016, reports emerged that the film would undergo five weeks five weeks of reshoots with Tony Gilroy writing additional scenes as well as acting as a second unit director under Edwards. Uh, With input from Edwards, Gilroy oversaw the edit and additional photography of the film, which tackled several issues, including the ending. In August, Gilroy was given screenplay credit alongside Weitz and was paid $5 million for his work on the film. Additionally, Christopher McQuarrie from Mission Impossible series, uh, Scott Z. Burns and Michael Arndt all contributed to the script at various stages in development. Yeah, Yeah, so there was a lot going on there. Um, in addition to that, something that we'll talk about later, but I think one of the biggest issues of this movie is the score. Uh, first Star Wars movie not done by John Williams, and I feel like it has a, it. a couple good moments, but you can definitely yeah. feel it. Uh, and on top of that, there's a reason that I didn't know. I didn't know. Alexand- Alexander Desplat was doing the music for this movie. When all the reshoots happened, he was like, I can't. My schedule just doesn't fit this. So he just backed out pretty much last minute. Um and Michael Giacchino? Giacchino. Giacchino. Yeah, yeah. Uh, only had four and a half weeks Oof. to compose the music for the film, beginning almost immediately after finish, pr- finishing production on Doctor Strange. Wow. Oh. I, I, Quick turnaround. I, yeah. I, I really dislike a lot of the music <clears throat> cues in this, predominantly the ones that uh, turn the notes toward a major key, because I think there's a, there's, a, there's a hint of hopefulness. Yeah. And you're like... It's, and I just, 
I don't like that at all. Yeah. But when it's minor, when that theme comes back and it's really like it gets across the point of like, hey, they're all going to die. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Totally. It's just that one cue, especially when you see the ro- it's it's really the, when you see the Rogue One title, it's like, but that does come back in that yeah. it does. later it does. in ways that feels it feels off. It's for very what very weird because My, this movie is yeah. dark as fuck. And to their credit, this is the this is I think the darkest Star Wars movie we've ever seen. Yeah, and I love it, yeah. and I think it totally works, and I think it's a shame that they didn't want to do more of this. Okay, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that they looked at this and they're like, "That's really this is as dark as we want to go with it." Let's let's start to turn it a little bit back to more whimsical, adventurous, with especially with the main trilogy and when we see later with Solo. But man, this this I mean, like I, when you see Cassian kill a guy for no reason, that's straight up like Han shooting Greedo. But we're not gonna retcon that shit. <laughs> he shoots the motherfucker in the back, and the guy's like, "How do I do?" He's like, "Don't worry." Yeah. Yeah, like I can't climb that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but it's more impactful <laughs> because he is Han is like, "Oh, he is he? He's not really a good yeah. guy. He's he's kind of just a dude that like doesn't like the good guys." Whereas Cassian is a good guy. Yeah. But I, but I love that though because he's he is a good guy. But they really, I think this movie. Out of all the movies, it's a really good job of, pu- of putting people in the gray area where they have a, they have really good back and forth and a really good dialogue between Jyn Erso and Cassian where they sit and they and, and there's that one scene where they're where they're he's like she's accusing him of being closer to a stormtrooper because he's just following orders and doing horrible things and he's like we don't. Some of us don't have the luxury of caring, like or getting to care whenever we want Love to. Love that. I've yeah. been in this fight since I'm six years old. And then she goes, she has that great line. She's like, "You're you can't explain this away with words." And he goes, "I don't have to," cool. and walks away. And yeah. that shit right there, so you're like, "Cool." I see and both sides around. of this. Yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. both. And, and then he stands around. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> like, Anyone else want some shit? God, I love that whole. And then he's like, and everyone looks at him. He's got that dope ass Han Solo like jacket on, like yeah. Han Solo wore from Hoth. And I was like, "You got me with that, man." It's the costume design in this is awesome. That was right after he like decides not to kill her dad and the dad still gets killed. Yeah, so yeah. it was one of those things where it's like, you went up there to kill my dad and he's like, hey, that was the job. And but he's like, like, I could have taken the shot whenever I wanted. Yeah. And she's like, but you were still going to do it. He's like, well, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, back, I, to, the, back to the music real quick. Sorry. My favorite cue in all of it is when they start to climb the archives. I love that really like terrifying, <laughs> sort of weird, dark tone that, mm-hmm. that suddenly takes over because... Uh, that's when K2SO finally gets he gets killed and it's oh, over. Oh man! And the and, and the music kind of comes like na 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 na. I just love it's just fucking freaky, man. I love that whole sequence. Yeah. Well, I, I love that they were able to really, really sp- like from the third act on. You're like, this is a countdown to the end for these mm-hmm. people, and you feel it. And there's no like, even when we were watching it, you're like, I don't, I don't feel at any point that these guys are gonna make it out of this alive. And there's something so wonderful and fucked up and like validating about that of just knowing that you know like it's like in world war ii when the fighters didn't have enough fuel to get back to the carrier but they took off anyway and you're like fuck that's so dark and fucked up but like there's so much meaning in that for the characters to do that sacrifice yeah i i love i feel like there was the moment essentially once k2so like you realize like he's he's about to die and that that music cue hits from there on i feel like the the stakes just keep getting raised in a way where like you know the result like you can feel the results coming yeah. you don't know but you you can feel it but i really like how the, the passing of the baton of them we we understand every plane of action that's going mm-hmm. on uh, whether it's from space down because it all relates to this one area that they're at yeah and i really enjoyed the way that they had it where there was the moment where once the thing was destroyed they're like oh we're, we're fucked we're not getting out of here like mm-hmm. there's the shield we're we're screwed. Yeah. And I liked that they committed to that. And then there were the moments where I usually don't like in movies that have like the uncharted moments where it's every single jump they make, they, they grab on at the last moment right. and stuff. And it just kind of cheapens when people are actually in danger. This movie has a couple of those. But I feel at the end they did a good job of uh, taking me out of thinking that way when she goes to put the, the thing in the satellites not correctly thing and she has to go back and do it. It was just that one thing that, I thought that in any other movie, I would have been like, oh, my God, does there need to be one more th- obstacle? Yeah. But in this, I was just like, oh, my God, just fucking give them something. Please give them <laughs> fucking something. Well, I, it, 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 typical Star Wars fashion, you're like, why would the controls of this dish be out on the fucking thing that's way out there, like with no <laughs> yeah. safety guidelines whatsoever? Um, yeah, I, I, there's a few of those moments. I think the, the tethering of the connection thing 
it was a little too much for me on the second time. This is my third time viewing it. And I watched it. I'm like, I get we got to give Bodhi something to do. And we got to give the ground crew something important to do. But the idea of, like, we can't send a signal until unless we're tethered into their system. Let's find like, the master switch. I was like, this is a, this is a lot. I, just see, I, a lot I, of words I, Master happen. switch is just the most generic thing. Master switch is generic as fuck. But I do I love that, that, like, to get their signal out, they had to be incorporated into the system. And, like, that give the, gave them such a good excuse to, like, show these characters slowly dying one by one, all completing their job and then dying, with the exception of the like the gunner guy who really was just like fuck this up for revenge. <laughs> yeah. Or Baze, who I forgot I always uh, yeah. Baze him up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like that Bodie's Bodhi guys, getting man. the signal out and the, the dude that looks like Admiral Akbar like getting it. Like, that, that that is such a fucking phenomenal moment. Yeah, all, all yeah. of those layers are great. And, and it's one of those things where, like, you know, they, they say Rogue One. I think that's the first time you, like, really hear them say, the, like, the title of the movie. No, it's when, no, he, it's it's when, when he calls, calls out. And, and yeah, and he's like, Rogue One calling out. This, and but this just is the so first uh, Star Wars movie to, to say the title yeah, in it. But it, it's just, it's such a poignant moment of them, like, catching that message and being like, hey, we got it. We're gonna shut down the shield. We'll figure it out. And then he immediately, like, the grenade falls in there. He just looks at it. And he, what he, I think he says he for, for the... No, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything. He just blows up. He just, he just fucking dies, fate, yeah. which I love. Doesn't he, doesn't he say right before the grenade goes in, doesn't he say, like, for what's-his-face, the uh, oh, for Jin's dad? Uh, for Galen. For Galen, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. just like... But when fuck, he blows so up, though, cool. yeah, I, love yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I love the choice they're of just, job, just him just standing there. It's yeah, not like, looking at it. Yeah, there's no... there's no uh, You know, that's the way out. That's where the grenade is. It's about to go off. Reminds you of the sniper in Saving Pride, right? I mean, and that's by design, by the way. I mean, there's a lot of cues, specifically in the costumes, that are very World War One, very Vietnam, very like this is a war movie, mm-hmm. yeah. and they wanted and you to yeah they wanted you to feel that feeling of the last scene of Saving Private Ryan, which is like these these guys are all gonna die and they're all gonna die for this one cause they believe in, and they fucking nailed it. Yeah, like I love like I love and it's so not Star Wars, but I love when they when he comes around the corner or she comes around the corner and she looks over and Cassian's there and he's got the people that are gonna go with him and they're all in like Vietnam era flak jackets with like Vietnam helmets. Style. It's either Vietnam. It's like a mix of Vietnam and World War Two. But like they look like old school, like soldiers from a, a bygone era war. I didn't like things. that because oh, I, I like I the idea it. of it if they if they were mixed in with other more traditional rebel people because it was just like oh, okay, so yeah, you, you got the the bad guys that are good, <laughs> all of them together. And they're all the ones that are going to do this. It just felt very very cartoony and weird uh, where it it's like really we're all wearing the matching uniforms for this but one it felt like an old war movie like and, and that's not something that happens as much but like yeah, I feel like bands of, Band of Brothers and stuff had mm-hmm. a lot of these shots where they would like show all the like renegades that were going to go out there and like save the day at no matter at what cost you know I'm in and I yeah. loved the imagery it's just yeah. where were those guys in any other shot we've ever seen of the rebel base that was a little weird yeah. I mean there, we did get introduced to a lot of characters there that were like we're supposed to care for these people but I think they did an okay job of like peppering them in and and giving them making them support characters for the main characters. I just like that like Cassian A gets to change his costume, which is awesome. And B, every time he does, it's something cooler and cooler. And I love I like that that thicker, like almost looks like armored vest that they give these people to wear. I, just, I think it's a cool little yeah. touch that that to me was like, oh, these guys are are ready to go to war at any given time. They're not wearing just like cool slacks and a gun on their side. They're like they got shit that they can they can bring into war with them. For a me, budget of two hundred sixty five million, box office of one point five six billion. Fuck yeah, dude! Woo, all right, insane. Uh, just Green light last, solo. What did y'all last. think about it? Runtime of two hours and thirteen minutes. Kev, what, what are you gonna say real quick? I was just gonna say, first of all, I I love this movie. I absolutely adore it. I think it does three things amazingly. One, it shows Star Wars having wars in it, which we don't really see. Two, I feel like it does a phenomenal job showing that, like, the rebellion wasn't necessarily a good thing, or we see, like, the dark side of, of that. Um, and then the third one is that, it like, when it ends, it's like, I'm so hyped and ready to watch uh, episode four. And, like, that's, I think that that's what a prequel should do, you know? Yeah, I'm with Kyle on that. I, I specifically at one point where they have a moment where they get the alliance together, and the alliance you get is this kind of disjointed grouping of, of systems that are not all on the same page. And it's kind of like it's a, it's it's a 
it's barely believable, but it works for me. As opposed to like a galactic Senate where there's 10,000 people all cheering for something. Like mm-hmm. this feels a lot more like they just have legit. Everyone has a legitimate point where like we can't go up against that thing. We got to scatter the fleet and get out of here and regroup somewhere else. And someone's like, no, this is our last ditch effort to do this thing. And it's like this is a fascinating argument that you're having back and forth. Also, where did you find this actress that looks exactly like Mon Mothra? Mothma. Yeah. It's so amazing. That, that is amazing. Genevieve O'Reilly rep- uh, reprised her role as Mon Mothma, whom she previously played in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, Jimmy Smith also returns as Leia's father, Bail Organa. The Smiths. So that is, that is fun. Um, yeah, I, I really, really like Rogue One. This is also my third time watching it. And I, I feel like it is a, a great movie, but I do think that all the elements that I like about it would have been better served as a TV show. Where I feel the first half, not half, first arc of this movie is an amazing first episode of a season. And the last arc of this movie is an amazing season finale. Like, fucking amazing season finale. I think everything in the middle feels like five episodes of a TV show condensed. So there's just kind of moments where I love the characters. And watching them at the end, I really care about them. But I feel like I care about them just because I want to, not because they actually did a good job. Like Them together as a team, I'm like, I don't believe in you as a team at all. Yeah. You're just like, when they all kind of get on the ship after when Jetta's exploding, it's like, cool. Why is Why are they staying together even? You know? Like it kind of just feels like uh, I would have liked to see a bit more fleshing out of the character dynamics between everybody. And I feel like I would have preferred not having a focus on Jin, having a focus just more on the team all of them being equally important because it kind of just felt to me like we jump made a lot of jumps uh, cuz we had to move quickly. See, I think if you did this as a TV show, it would be it would run its course very very quickly. I think this is I'm like watching this for the third time, I'm like, cool. This is a good self-contained story. I think they did a good job. I think if it was any longer, I would really start to lose interest in what was going on here cuz really it's just about this one mission they go on. Mm-hmm. Everything else is building up to that. I I like that they at least made an attempt to have some some emotional connection to Jin through her father, and I think I think the way they did that, and the way I think Gary specifically was the one that that um, crafted this little bit was to have that flaw built into the Death Star be a, by by design. So brilliant! I think it was a really really yeah. smart choice, and I think having him have to be this double agent was cool. Totally, um, I think it's one but of that, the. But that goes with what I'm saying though of the the death of like, did anybody have any emotional feeling when he died? I, I think that because I didn't they're at all, I, I, I did because K2SO? I think they're two really good actors. Did. I think the fact that it's yeah. Mads Mikkelsen and and uh, Felicity, ugh, not Huffman, Jones? Jones, Jones. I think they're great actors, and I think that this that's what this movie is about. Um, thank you so much. This movie, more than any other Star Wars movie, relies less on the actual effects, less on the concept of of having to throw a lightsaber and a Jedi in there, and more on just like, hey, we're going to make a good movie. Like, there are moments in this movie that you don't see in any other Star Wars film, where like, they, we just sit with the character in silence for a second. And that's not something that you would think, like, most Star Wars films don't give the characters that space to breathe in the scene. There's just moments where like, Cassian's just there, and he's just like you're. You're in that moment with him, where you're you're feeling the gravity and the weight of what he has to do, and it's really really cool. Um, and, and you know, I always, I always, I'm, I'm kind of that person that's like, I don't want a Batman show without Batman. I don't want Star Wars without lightsabers. But this is the one, the one time I look at it, and I'm like, it works because it is that self-contained story. Because the filmmakers are so good, and they hired great actors, and they gave them good like moral conundrums to put themselves in. So they got you actually feel when they're yelling back at each other, and she's like, you were gonna kill my dad, and he's like. I don't have the fucking luxury of getting to choose when I can care about stuff. That is such a cool, like, back and forth between two characters that you actually like. And also, yeah. shout out to Diego Luna. Who's I would have liked awesome. more. Of that, so though. good. Yeah. I, I, I would have liked more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, uh, I, th- I, th- I think this is one of the few movies that does the over explaining to over explain something else in another movie that, uh, with the flaw in the Death Star, I like any, if any other movie tried to do something like that where they are, um, not not retconning, but uh, but, no, but I think oh, retconning is fair. But like oh, yeah. but ex- it is. explaining yeah. something for the sake of uh, I guess this is really you know for the purpose of the story. But it could have been one of those things that we that the collective audience I rolled at. But for me, and uh, when I sat in the theater watching, I was like, wow, that's really fucking cool, and I I enjoyed that. They actually went for it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this movie I've liked more and more as I've rewatched it, and. It feels it, it's weird to me that I feel that way because usually when movies have a lot of writers involved, when they have a lot of hands and a lot of cooks in the kitchen, 
I feel like that is usually to the movie's detriment. And I didn't really, I can't, I don't get that vibe from watching this movie. I think it's gotten better every time I watched it. The first time watching it, in the first act, maybe the first half of the movie, I just had this like, I don't know if I like this movie. And K2SO is kind of the only reason why I'm enjoying this at all. And then the third act picked up, of course. This, these most recent viewings, uh, I just have such an appreciation for the actors and the dynamics that we see, although they're a little bit too few and far between, I, I, I think that they are, uh, like, the weight of those decisions, the weight of those arguments are so, like, well done, you know. Also, it's just fascinating to see what they can play with when the characters don't have superpowers, like the Jedis, right? You're just dealing with people that are, like, spies and, and this underworld and this, like, I don't know. It's got the overall tone of this is just so dark. And I fucking love it. Yeah. And it's just, and again, beautifully shot. Like, we're, we'll get to the, the, the plot right now, but the first shot we see is so fucking gorgeous yeah it is and it just starts. the use of shadows in this movie and the use of scale i think is the I most mean, impressive like the amount of times you see a ship compared to something else like the star destroyer above uh jedi, jedi city, city or so cool. the best shot in any star wars movie ever which is the star destroyer coming out of the shadows and you're like wow something big is putting this thing in shadows and then as it pulls back you realize the fucking death star <laughs> so, cool. so cool so cool as they put the giant plate on there yeah before we get to uh the the, the little segue i guess into the plot here is uh some witta facts for you oh. uh may the facts be with you G- uh gary witta also drafted an opening crawl that went unused mm. pretty cool uh gary one of the script writers filmed a cameo as a rebel pilot but it never made the final cut which damn is major oh, that's bonus. too bad uh, and Admiral Akbar was intended by Gary Witta to lead the assault on Scarif, which would have been awesome. Uh, however, J.J. Abrams beat him to the punch and used him in Force Awakens. And Gary was like, uh, Gary was quoted as saying, "We didn't want to use him again after the Force Awakens, so Akbar became Admiral Radis." Yeah, I think that's cool because like it, it seems like he died. <laughs> you know what I mean, Radis? Like at at the end of that attack, mm, I don't mm. think they got out of there. It was it was also God, man the scene terrifying. where they're all about to escape and, the, and, the and they run into destroyer. the yeah. oh yeah. That, last thing I want to say for the plot, Star Destroyer. I think this is the best uh, space scene we've seen in any of the movies. Hands like, down, hard stop. Like the one thing in Force Awakens where uh, when they go to they Maz Kanata's castle and Poe's po 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 going, that is like a condensed moment that I think is great. But as an overall like set piece battle, I love. The way that it's directed, I love the dialogue. I love the way that it's shot. I love the GoPro e things. I didn't like it the first time I watched it, but there's something about it. Just seeing more movies now, where it's like it, I feel like it fits a bit more. Yeah. Um. And I really love how integral it was to the plot at large of what they were all doing. Yeah. It, it felt believable. I agree, and I think I think those I think the aerial combat and stuff like that is so tastefully done. Whereas in in the prequels you see shit just everywhere, and in this you're like, oh, I can follow along. They're going on attack right of the shield thing, and you're like, you feel it when they're like, we can't. That moment when the fucking X Wing bounces off the shield oh my God. is is horrible. It's, I mean, it's yeah. so bad. I mean, like in a great way. Yeah. Like, terrifying. I I just think they did a good job with this whole thing. Yeah, movie. it's so crazy that they made force fields feel so like like, like, like ping pongs. Yeah. Like, you and know, it's like, just oh, my like God. oh shit. Like, yeah, a message can't get across. Yeah. A fucking X Wing just got destroyed and on. And there's it. that beautiful moment where you're like, what's in that ring? And then all the doors open and all the TIE fighters come out. You're like, oh, that's what they so hide in that fucking thing. A lot of TIE fighters. Probably should have launched those about 20 minutes earlier, but whatever. Nick will... T- I don't remember the plot song. Plot, <laughs> plot, plot, plot. Go. All plot, right. plot, <laughs> plot, 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 plot. This song doesn't it's have that plot. song. Uh, a <laughs> long... This movie doesn't have that song. A long That's time ago, saying. in a galaxy far, oh, far way. away... No, you're not getting the Star Wars logo, ladies and gentlemen. This is something What different. are you getting instead? We get a beautiful... <laughs> Beautiful sound cue with a shot of a transport ship landing on a Saturn-like planet. It's got the rings, and the transport ship looks so fucking cool. Do you think that Vader saw that and was like, no, 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 no. I got to have a cooler one than this because that's too cool. Because it has a little tiny fin on the top. Or anyway, of escalation. It's so rad. Uh, a young child, Jyn Erso, so runs back to warn her parents that they're cool underground hippie igloo. Uh, uh, th- there's people coming. And also there's blue milk there, but they don't beat you over the fucking face with it. Yeah, they like do they punch do. in on it real yeah. hard. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. this, this movie, I think, is a, a definite ride of fan service of working and not working. And, and the delicate balance, I think, is... I, I don't having think a pitcher moment, of blue yeah. milk there didn't take me out of the it's scene. It's not the all. same as... It's not like he's stuck <laughs> on the 
Jin's head of a giant b- <laughs> fucking. Anyway, okay. Oh, uh, uh, Jin's mom calls Saguro and tells him that it's, it's time. It's finally happened. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen, uh, who is now uh, Galen Erso, calls Jin over and tells her that whatever he's going to do, he's doing to protect them. He calls her uh, Stardust, and it's adorable. Mm. And you're like, that's cool. Maybe he'll do that 15 more times in this movie. <laughs> Outside, uh, Orson Krennic lands, played by the uh, formidable Ben Mendelsohn, who is fucking awesome in this so, movie. He's such a good douchebag. He's. I, I just feel like. He brought something to a Star Wars villain that we haven't seen before, which is like the unabashed pettiness. suck up and pettiness, yeah. and and he nails it. But he's also like he's such a good actor that you just want to fucking punch him in the face, yeah. <laughs> but also you don't because so you know true. he's gonna fuck you up if and you do that. Visually, I love this. I love this movie starts where it's just like we're gonna use colors differently than we ever have. It's gonna be a much more drab movie, a lot of gray, but we're gonna make sure that other colors pop accordingly. And like I love the so much green grass, green, yeah. and when they come and he's wearing white with the black. Death Troopers. Troopers, yeah, so cool. So stark white with a dope ass white rain slicker on, and that's like half cape. You're like, dude, I want that outfit. Yeah, he's he's such a good <laughs> douchebag. So cool. Leading up, I mean, even leading up to the moment where Lisa runs, he's like, oh, she's alive. What a miracle. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love that <laughs> line knows. of dialogue. Yeah, so Gala goes out there to meet him. Uh, tells him that the fa- his family's dead. He doesn't want to work for him again. And he's like, no, come on, man, come work for me again. You're like, he's not really asking. He's telling, and the Death Troopers are awesome to just. I, mean, he, I love that he only brought like five with him. I was like, I don't need more than this. Mm-hmm. I could two would have sufficed, but we'll bring a couple extra just in case. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jin's mom gives her a necklace and tells her to run, uh, but instead uh, she doubles back to see to see if she can help her parents. Uh, Krennic wants Galen to come back. Work has stalled. Uh, we are this close to providing peace for the galaxy, and they have a great line where he goes, "You're uh, uh, you're confusing peace with terror." And he goes, "You got to start somewhere." <laughs> it's like fuck. <laughs> Once again, just nailing this. So he's like, "Well, you have horrible to start somewhere. villain." Yeah. Like he knows. He's like, yeah. "I know. I've got you. I found you. Like you're done." Uh, l- uh, Liara, I think is how you say her name. Oh, Liara, that's what I meant. Uh, yeah. Tries to intervene, uh, so they ice her. And Krennic's like, "Oh, she's alive." Uh, uh, I said Lisa because of Death Stranding. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Which I like. Why did they kill her? Like, I, I guess she takes a shot at him. But like, it's just one of those things. Like, why would she take a shot? They, they, they've won. She's not going to get him out of the situation. And also, what you do know? you think? Like, the odds of her little shitty blast is going to pierce through one of y'all's like armors mm. or whatever. I don't know, know because we've yeah, never really yeah. defined what armor does in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> sometimes it's great, and sometimes it does absolutely it's nothing. A yeah. If you're a stormtrooper, it's just plastic. Yeah. And it's actually probably hindering your your experience. Uh, they blast her. Um, and then Krennic, uh, Krennic orders his troops to go find Jin, uh, so they can basically uh, use her to as a uh, you know to convince Galen to do uh, whatever chip, they want. Yeah. So Jin bounces and hides uh, to her hiding place down a giant bomb shelter in a cave. Uh, there she waits uh, for someone to to get her. Finally, footsteps approach, and who opens the hatch? It's Saw Guerrero. Uh, he opens the hatch and he tells Guerrero's her. Cousin. <laughs> Eddie Gu- Guerrero, excuse me. Yeah. I don't know why I put Guerrero here. Latino heat. Yeah, there it is. Um, <laughs> and he goes, "Do we have a long ride ahead of us? We have to go." And then we're like, oh, cool, we're going to see her grow up with this guy. Nope. Uh, we get the Rogue One title flash, and the music is terrible, and it's very hopeful, and you're like, man, that's not what this movie is. And then Jen wakes up years later in jail. Must have been one hell of a long trip that she went on, because uh, we haven't seen anything that's going on there. I, I feel like that doesn't matter. They do a good job explaining, that, like, yeah, she then was raised by this militia-like terrorist. Mm. Then Forrest Whitaker has weird moments. So she was sixteen. Yeah, Forrest Whitaker's character in this yeah, is, is like, highly underutilized, yeah, he, in my opinion. But I, I do—it's weird. Like I do think that he has weird. his his Saw Guerrera accent for seventy percent of the time, and then he just dips into Forrest Whitaker for oh, the man. rest of it. And it's really—it's a weird mishmash of of dialogue, you know. Then we're over on the ring of Catherine. And thanks for the context here, filmmaker, because we get a lot of titles over Dude, screens. Dude, I, I love I'm those like, shots. I don't know that we need all like, context for everywhere we're going, but we it's We definitely okay. do. It yeah. adds to the lore and all and the cool it, stuff. Like, but the weird thing is, this is the first Star Wars movie that says the titles of what planet they're on, with the exception of Mustafar, which is very weird. There's yeah. one planet that Darth Vader plays. I think, I think we're just part supposed of that to know that's they, Mustafar. Uh, that, I get that it, but why, but if why gonna, would you title every single planet but not one? It's a good point, because they titled Yavin 4, and you're like, we've seen this a lot. So we know it's Yavin 4. Right ish. Was know. that not a cool moment? You see it say Yavin Four. I'm like, oh shit, we're going I back. It. I love it. I'll tell you what, though. Um, also, didn't, didn't like the font they used. Oh, like, I guess I just always think of uh, of uh, Avengers. Oh know, yeah, and Guardians. Mm-hmm. Too. Tell they are. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that that was done. That was done as almost like 
a, a, a fuck you to titles were just a space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we catch up with Cassie and Andor, who's played by the uh, by Diego Luna, uh, who's meeting with one of his snitches. Uh, the snitch tells him he's heard news of an Imperial <laughs> defector who knows of the Empire's plan to mine uh, kyber crystals on Jeddah so they can power a new weapon, a planet killer. Uh, someone named Orso uh, sent this guy, and he claims to be a friend of Saw Gerrera's, uh, and he uh, gave the defector all these, he gave the defector these plans. Then the two uh, then two stormtroopers find them, Cassie and blast them, but the snitch has a broken arm and can't climb to safety uh, as more stormtroopers approach Cassian makes the hard call to ice that dude's whiny ass and you know what to be honest it was the, the right, right call thing. it was like, the, right the world call. doesn't yeah. need him shot. Uh, but again another great character moment where you're like whoa you just committed murder you just killed someone that was trying to help you because if you didn't then the stormtroopers would have found out what he knows because this guy's obviously not going to hold up to torture at all. So he had to kill him. Dude, which is sad. Cassian's acting in that scene like right after like you okay. see the like the like not regret but like the weight of like his decision that he just made and it's like so well done very excited about Cassian's show uh, then we head over to Jeddah the Imperial occupied moon uh, Bodhi Rook uh, who is the uh, the pilot the defector is being taken to meet Saw Gerrera and all the costume design here is awesome uh, I want to give a shout out to some of the the, the nods that are in there uh, love the one ones wearing a blacked out kind of uh, scout trooper mask which is yeah. cool yeah. and then another one has uh, either a rebel helmet or like the helmet that Bosk wore. It's, it's very similar to like, either, like the stuff that we saw in uh, uh, Return of the Jedi, which I thought mm. was cool. Uh, they throw a bag over his head and take him in. As the camera pulls back, we see that uh, the base that they're taking him to is actually the giant statue of like a fallen Jedi statue. Which, which is, is weird. crazy weird, but whatever. Well, that whole planet was covered in those statues. Like they yeah. had been knocked over all over I didn't the place. love that. Oh, I dug it. It, it seems oddly out of place yeah. for the Jedi. Yeah. And the only reason I said that is because the Jedi aren't supposed to be about vanity. And you think erecting 4,000 feet statues of yourself in stone would be like the opposite of that? Where you're like, I really want to see my, what I look like on Mount Rushmore. That's not what the Jedi are about. But either way. I mean, uh, that's, not, that's not what we knew the Jedi as from what we've seen of the Jedi movies. These seem to be like really ancient like Jedi like temples. And maybe so. someone was just like this. I'm bored. There's Manhattan. just something about it, it looking like a Jedi that to me just seems like just out of place. Mm. I feel like since then, though, we've seen a lot of stuff like that where, like, the Fallen Order, like, we have a bunch of, you know, there's moments where you see these giant Jedi, like... Future spoilers. Uh, meanwhile... Well, I mean, I'm not saying anything more. <laughs> uh, Jin's being taken on an, to an Imperial work camp. The transport stops, and the door blasts open, and a bunch of rebel fighters come in to free her. How does she repay them? By beating their asses. Luckily, K2SO is there to fucking <laughs> clothesline her ass into submission. Jeez. We are saving you. And he goes, congratulations, <laughs> you're being rescued. Please do not resist. Uh, they take her over to Yavin 4. The Alan Tudyk, Alliance. the goddamn MVP. Of this it's great, man. He's so good. And uh, they take her over to Yavin 4, the Alliance headquarters. Thank God for all those titles. Uh, once there, Mon Mothma, am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and General Draven uh, reveal her true identity as Jen Orso. There, she was being held under an assumed identity, but we knew exactly who she was. Uh, Jen Orso, they want to make her a deal. Uh, Cassian wants to in- her to introduce them to Saw Gerrera. He wants an introduction. Uh, they they know how to find them, uh, but they need someone to get them through the door without getting them killed, and she's the only person that they know that he knows. Um, Saw is an extremist. Also, he loves huffing that laughing gas, so he's very, very dangerous. Uh, they need to get the Imperial defectors so they, so they can know what he knows, and also do a couple of whippets courtesy of the old Saw Gerrera, if you know what I'm talking about. He's such a, like, a Borderlands villain. <laughs> Saw Gerrera? Yeah, he's just like this weird, like, I, let me huff on this thing. The way thing he and... yanks down the cable, too. Yeah. He's so, like, uh, if they can find Saw, hopefully they can help. Uh, he can help them locate Galen, so Galen can testify before the Senate and close the Emperor's plans down for good. Um, which actually seems like a much better idea than just stealing the plans and trying to destroy the Death Star. But it's interesting that they just kind of threw that touch in there. Where like, if we get him, we can actually take him and like convince all these planetary systems that what the Emperor is doing is bad. Uh, and if, of course, if Jin helps, they'll make sure she goes free. Uh, once and Jin's like, okay, sign me up. Once on the ship, K2SO tells Jin straight up that it's a bad idea that she comes. And I love I love how blunt he is in this entire movie. I like that they also like explain that away with like, yeah, since he got reprogrammed, he doesn't really have the internal monologue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, outside, uh, it's like Golden Girls, uh, Captain or Captain Draven, General Draven uh, pulls Cassian aside and gives him some additional orders. He's like, listen, we can't take the chance. If you find Galen, you got to kill him. We can't we can't risk him staying alive and doing whatever he's doing for the with the thing. And normally this would be one of those moments where like the shitty FBI guy agents like, hey. You got, I'm telling the the main character what to do. You, you're I know you not, don't want to do this. You're not my jurisdiction. But in the, in this regard, I'm like, okay, this actually kind of plays because we don't know what he knows. We don't know if he's good or bad. He's worked for the Empire yeah. for a long time. We we can't beyond with any certainty say that he's a good guy because we have no evidence to prove that. So if you get a shot, take the shot. And so you kind of like, 
I like that. I'm like, okay, that's it's believable. Uh, let's see. Once on board, Cassie lets Jin, uh, Jin keep a blaster. Uh, she's like, yeah, I'm like and, and K2SO is like, this is a bad thing. And he goes, well, trust goes both ways. And then he goes, would you like to know the probability of her using that against you? It's high. Very, <laughs> very high. Very high. <laughs> yeah. I love his hand yeah, yeah, yeah. gesture there. <laughs> so good. Uh, the music here is awesome. It stays minor the whole time, which is, which is really, really cool. Uh, the movie is dark. It looks awesome. Uh, back on Jetta, Saw interrogates Bodhi Rook. They find uh, they found a thumb drive in his boot, but he but Saw wants to know if he's lying or not. So uh, he calls over the board. Go in. No, no, no. <laughs> Before we go to that, like, how cool was it? They're like, oh, we found this in the thing. And he's like, I can hear you. I'm right here. They didn't find it. I gave it to them to give to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, so obviously, I think we're all going to have issues with the CG fucking Borg. Why? Hell it's called. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's stupid. It's silly. It doesn't scare you at all. But I feel like their intent with it was to make Saw seem like. He's paranoid a good guy, crazy. but he's paranoid, crazy, and an extremist, and like he goes too far, mm -hmm. and whatever. It doesn't come across that way, and it just feels distracting and silly, and yeah. I wish... Sagarera could be so cool, so great. His group could be so scary. They're not mm. at all. Yeah. And it's because of the stupid monster. Also, but I also think we get too little of him to like explain. Like We just get these little glimpses of, like, oh, this guy's just kind of crazy, and his team seems to be lying and like helping him get crazier, you know? Uh, also, the point of the monster was to see if he was telling the truth, which he was, but then... It also saw would make him what, crazy. And then it was going to take his memory away, but then after that happened, Saw never seems to believe him anyway, and then he gets his memories back. So yeah. that I, whole sequence feels really useless. pointless. But I think that that whole sequence was to help define Fa, uh, Saw as like a yeah. crazy person who's, did who's lost it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it reminds me of scene, the scene in uh, Mission Impossible, the first one, where he's like, if you fire that, that hard drive up, they're going to be on you in like six minutes. And she's like, all right, we'll see. And they have that moment where they ha she has to test him. It, I wish they had something like that where mm -hmm. he's like, I can't tell if you're, you're telling the truth, so we have to like take some assurances. But this thing coming in and like Vulcan mind melding with him just didn't work. Yeah. This whole scene yeah, is just yeah, kind of yeah, dumb. It was dumb. I wish this Another was kind of dumb yeah. monster. But he does have the thing where he's like, <laughs> I don't know if I can trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Little laughing gas. All right. Uh, then we get the coolest shot in this whole fucking movie, which is the uh, the the star destroyer coming out of the shadow of the Death Star, uh, on which Krennic is meeting with Ad, uh, General Tarkin, uh, who does not look good. And I really wish they had figured something else out for this. It because been, I hate this whole fucking. I hate anything that he's in. It would have been so cool if they had kept the shot. Uh, over the shoulder on um, what's his face? Just uh, the reflection, and just the reflection on the mirror. Reflection and, the, like, and hologram. That's yeah. all I thought, I thought it was gonna be. I thought and it was it just, just gonna it's, be that. Th like I, I think that ILM was really proud of the work they did, and it like it's really cool, but it's not quite there. The skin texture just looks wrong, and like they focus so long on that shot. I was a defender of it a lot more when I first saw it in theaters of it just being cool because mm. it is cool that Tarkin's in this uh, but watching it now it's like it does not work yeah. right it's, it's just one of those things where I'm like if you if they found an actress to play uh, Mon Mothma that was the same actress well, that was not the same actress said. from A New Hope 100% not Return of the Jedi no, right? no. Oh, God, I'm no. sorry. I thought it was 30 years earlier. I thought that's what you he said. Was talking sorry. About Revenge of the no, God, God, no. God. They they found that actress, and it's like I, I don't think that Tarkin, that actor, was so monolithically important to the story that they couldn't have just found a guy that looked like well, that. They found mm -hmm. a guy that looked like him. Um, I I didn't write his name down, but they they found a dude that did the motion capture and mm -hmm. stuff, and then they added it on. They should have just it. kept yeah. that guy. Yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. it's one of those things where I'm like, I, I get that we wanted to see Tarkin again, and, and we get that he's an iconic character, but it didn't need to be the same guy. Mm. Uh, unlike Leia, where if you'd had a, if you'd have recast a young Carrie Fisher, it would have taken you out of it. You'd have been like, mm -hmm. I don't understand who this person is. It would have been very confusing. I mean, we would have figured it out because she had the, the cinnamon yeah. buns on her head Ooh. and the white robe, but. You can't. That that's a that's a much more important choice to make. With this, I'm like, this guy's on screen a lot. Yeah, and I don't this know. I, I feel like Tarkin is such a unique looking person and is so iconic. One of the few characters even in A New Hope that I feel like you can't just recast him. Sirens but I do think they end. should have been wiser about how they used they him. used yeah. him. Sirens are on our end. Uh, I think he looked good in about thirty percent of his shots. Mostly where he's not talking. Yeah. Uh, but there are a few shots that really bug me as somebody who's like a stickler for CG. There's so many different shots where his teeth are not being shaded, where his teeth are not c catching shadow from anything. It's just, it's it's almost as if they are not 
like they're on a different lighting layer or something. Yeah. And then and then it cuts to Krennic, and Krennic's you know has the correct shading because he's a human being and, and actual real lighting. But it, it it does throw me off quite a bit. And it's yeah. unfortunate too because Ben Mendelsohn's performance across the board is awesome. And I would have loved every time he's acting like when he that first scene where it's him and Mads Mikkelsen, and they're two phenomenal actors. And there's like sub and they're just like they're, he's being cordial to him, but you, there's just this underlying ominous fucking presence that's there. It's so rad. We kind of get that a little bit with this, but I wish it would have just been. I mean, just put two actors in a fucking thing. Let's get a balding guy. It's done. He's talking. We get it. Like, stop doing this shit. Because um, they're only gonna do more of it, and it's it's never. I've never seen one movie where this doesn't take me out of it. Get Doug I, I feel Jones like some Terminator Dark Fate was the first time where I've seen this. Uh, like that that face of effect done very well. That's fair. It's like whoa. That is that is yeah. fair. That's, Holy that's the first shit. time. But um, like it took me out of exciting. it in, in Blade Runner. I was like, oh god damn it! Why did you do this? This yeah. does not look good. Um, oh, I, I, I do. While well, we're talking about the CGI f- like fakes, um, I feel like when I originally watched this movie, I thought that the Leia scene was way too long, and it still feels a little long. But it's like long. it's it's not as long as I remember it, and it's I think a little bit more forgivable. Well, when you're in the theaters, it, it felt like two yeah. years. That's one of those scenes where they should have just. Oh Jesus! Oh, <laughs> Fuck! I forgot. I guess so. Everybody over here. Really? They talking, talking, talking. Oh, they go, they go, they go. <laughs> what do they go? <laughs> they go, lay, lay, lay. Where water? Yeah, where is water? Where is water? Good question. Is that? Dip. Yes. Dip. What, mm-hmm. race is, what race is water? Toy Darian. And how long a Toy Darian live, huh? <laughs> What? How long, <laughs> how long did it tell you? There it's so it? funny how it's like you can clearly hear him when he's on the other side. <laughs> and then, then it gets close and it's in <laughs> your <laughs> ear. How long do they live? I don't know. How long, know. I don't know. How long do they live? It's a live? long time, Andy. <laughs> oh, okay. I live a long time, man. <laughs> okay. Why are you not in this movie? The Mads Mikkelsen, <laughs> the talking, <laughs> the Leia. This sounds like a New Yorker talking. Where the water? Yeah. Where the water? Where the water, man? <laughs> I, I, I want to respect Wado for one reason right now is that he decided to do the Italian uh, chest hair out, which is great. If we can get a couple gold chains in here next time, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Please you don't didn't, touch him. Please you don't didn't touch need him. to take the shirt off to put the costume on, but I respect that you wanted to stay every, arid. Every week, Wado here shows I did not. Daddy. You know what? I, I feel like it's just... You want in there? No. Well, I just feel like it's because you have a lack of chest so hair scary. now because of the bat symbol. I'm noticing your chest for the first Wado, time. Wado, 91 years. Years is the yes. lifespan. Hey, what do you know? Hey, you want the rebel? I know a rebel. His name Annie. No more bigger than a pumpkin ass. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Watto. Watto thank you, Jim. Watto. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, man. Watto. Thank you, Watto. And also, thank you to Untuck It. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the holidays are almost here, and you know what that means gifts. And what better gift to give the guy in your life than a stylish shirt that fits just right, even if you are that guy that's trying to gift yourself some better-looking shirts. Uh, thankfully, there's Untuck It, the original button-down shirt actually designed to be worn untucked. No matter your size or shape, Untuck It shirts always fall at the perfect untucked length. And with the holidays near, there's no better gift for your favorite guy who needs an upgrade. Uh, I love this site. was super easy to use. You just go on a ton of different options of shirts and colors and stuff. I ordered one. Next thing you know, I was looking good. It's p- falling at perfect length because I don't like tucking things in. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not a. I get it, Tim. Uh, with more than 50 plus fit combinations, Untuck It shirts look great on tall, short, slim, and athletic guys of all ages. Uh, you can choose styles like wrinkle-free button downs super soft flannels, outerwear, and more. Kevin, I know you'd like one of them super soft flannels. I love super soft flannels, Tim. I love them so much. Whether you're shopping for the perfect holiday gift or just trying to craft a smart, relaxed style of your own, Untuck It is the way to go. Visit untuckit.com and use code MORNING for 20% off at checkout. That's U-N-T-U-C-K-I-T.com. Promo code MORNING for 20% off. Now let me tell you about HIMS. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. Once you've noticed thinning hair, be too late. Is that hairline slowly starting to move backwards? If you're getting some bald spots, you better get on this, man. It's him's time. The best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still can. Andy, you've been using this. How's your experience going? It's been fantastic, Tim. Been keeping the hair. Haven't been seeing any more hair loss. Uh, Yeah, I'm really stoked about it. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Prescription solutions backed by Kevin's favorite thing, 
science. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. It's great. You can try today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to 4 slash morning show. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash morning show. 4 com slash morning show. Uh, prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online con- consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. You should see the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. Remember, that's 4 slash morning show. And finally, thanks to Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy. Getting out is hard, especially if your credit score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt like Greg Miller had when he was making the trek from San Fr- to San Francisco um, after college and had a lot of debt issues. Upstart could have helped him out there. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you and they understand you. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes. And the best part, once... The loan is approved and accepted. Most people get their funds the very next business day. Over 300,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals, and you can add to that number. See why Upstart's ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot, and hurry to upstart.com slash morning to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash morning. Where were we at, Nick? Uh, We are on the Death Star with Tarkin. He's pissed. He was like, Krennic. You, you got to clean up your mess, buddy. You've made time an ally of the rebellion, which I thought was a cool line. A cool uh, and he's like, we got to kill two birds with one stone by testing this weapon out. Let's do it. Uh, Jin has a flashback moment where she's young on Coruscant, which I thought was, re- I was like, this is so cool, so cool to see. Because yep. Yep. it's the first time we've been on Coruscant where it looks like a real city as opposed to like just the CGI mess. Um, and then she sees you know, a flashback of her mom giving her the, which I assume is a kyber crystal. Yeah. yeah, around her neck, um, and then her dad saying he'll always protect you. Start her mom in uh, early scripts, like early <clears throat> drafts, was a Jedi, but they decided not to go with that. That would have been not smart, clear, because but... she would have fucked those guys up if she. Was a Jedi. <laughs> yeah. uh, instead, she just barely knows how to use a blaster. Apparently, one uh, more they thing took I, the opposite approach to it. <laughs> one more thing I noticed about like uh, whenever uh, Tarkin is on screen. It, it probably isn't something that was actually done, but I just noticed it for whatever reason. I feel like they really upped the film grain. J- to make it feel like more yeah. like he's in there, yeah. you know, yeah, <laughs> to kind of mask, you know, they, put, they were like, oh, this doesn't look good. Put a noise filter, yeah, put it on a noise <laughs> yeah. filter, yeah. and then it took forever to render. Uh, Jin wakes <laughs> as they approach Jeddah. Uh, once they land, they spot a star destroyer protecting shipments of kyber crystals being taken out of the temple. Uh, they tell K2SO to stay back and head into town. And he's like, okay, yeah, why would I, of course, why would I not come with you? I'm just an imperial droid that. Looks like all the other Imperial Jedi's like, cool, I'll hang back. Uh, meanwhile, Bodhi tells the Boar Gullet, a giant, uh, or let's see, oh, Bodhi meets the Boar Gullet, a giant squid that can feel your thoughts. Unfortunately, side effect, you lose your mind. Uh, Cassian and Jen walk through the town and meet the dude from the cantina on, uh, on, on Tatooine. Uh, and yeah, I don't well, love this. No, it's bad. It's yeah. just so not, it, was a, it was not a smart choice. Cameo stuff. Rogue One utilized Sagarera, a character introduced in the animated television show The Clone Wars, as well as featuring cameo appearances of the Ghost and Chopper from the animated series Star Wars Rebels, and mentioning Hera Syndulla from that series. Doctor Evazan and Panda Baba uh, are these these characters here that we meet. Nick Panda Baba being the. Uh, wall, 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 my friend doesn't like you. Thing. I don't like you yeah. either. I'm going to get my hand cut off in about 10 years. Dr. Evazan being this dude. So I thought this was horrible, totally unnecessary, and just like takes you out of it. Some background on them, though, like is really, 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 really cool. Mm-hmm. So he's this doctor that focuses on like um, weird surgeries that you're not supposed to do, like cosmetic surgeries. And there's a lot of characters, and a lot of this got cut from this movie. There was going to be more of a, a plot going around this, um, like total background stuff of um, different aliens that like clearly are not right, including a bunch of people whose heads have been taken off, like from the nose up and were replaced by like androidy things, kind of like, um, you know, Lando's dude. Cyber- yeah. Like Robocop? Uh, from uh, oh, yeah. like Robocop, but Lando's dude in, uh, in Jedi. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly like that, but like it's really creepy looking. They decided not to go with it because it was too scary. That's probably a little too fucked up. Yeah. That's cool. That so instead, guy. they just went with a cameo that was... Really out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that guy make it off the planet in time? I guess so, because yeah, like, literally the next day or like three days later, we're going to meet him on Tatooine, right? Yeah. So whatever. Uh, while Jin go- uh, while Cassian goes to talk with his contact, Jin overhears Chirrut 
Imwi, who was played by Donnie Yen, uh, tell her to trade in, uh, trade her necklace for a glimpse into her future. And she's like, how can you see any of this stuff? You're blind. You're blind. And he's like, I'm fucking Donnie Yen. That's why. That's why I'm, I'm it, man. It was I'm his idea to be blind. So cool. Such a cool touch. What a great, yep. great concept. Uh, he tells her uh, the strongest stars have hearts of kyber crystals. Or kyber, rather. Cassian tells her that the guy and his friend are guardians of the wills, protectors of the temple. Uh, that's the first time, I think, in, in the, the main movies that we've heard of the wills, right? Yeah. Uh, too bad there's nothing left to protect. These guys are just hanging out being bums. Um, they come across an imperial shipment uh, that's about to be ambushed, and then shit goes down. Saw's rebels attack the convoy, and Jin saves a small child. Uh, the guerrilla fighters get... Uh, the upper hand as an ATSG comes in, uh, overwhelmed. Uh, Jin takes out a baton and start and just fucks up a whole group of uh, stormtroopers. Real We're cool. like, it's cool, but like, again, what do the helmets do? If the helmets <laughs> can't take a hit from a baton, like people get hit with sticks in this and they go down. I'm like, I just yeah, cheer it just be a stormtrooper without up. this stuff. Cheer it is destroying people with a goddamn Donatello staff, and I don't un- understand how. Like, how are these stormtroopers getting? We've seen the NFL. We've seen like, but we helmets haven't seen them go up helmets. against sticks. Yeah, yeah we have not. Yeah. Uh, this is a great scene. So uh, as they pound men. <laughs> as they round the corner, uh, they see stormtroopers coming at him. Jin decides to take out her cool like uh, baton that Jennifer Lopez had and out of sight, and just starts fucking them up. Yeah, uh, and they they get the upper hand, but then K two S O comes in and saves their asses. And there's that great moment where like one of them throws a grenade, he just catches it as he's talking, oh my God, throws so it good. back at him, and the, everything the way they animated K two S O in this. Where it's like there's a scene later where he whips around and shoots someone, yeah. and it's so precise. It's that machine precision mm. where there's, you know, uh, similar to like IG88 in The Mandalorian or IG11 rather. Very very uh, cool design. I here. do love also right before K2SO comes in, another one of those security droids comes in and she shoots him in the chest. And he goes, and "You did know that wasn't me, right?" Yeah, but he says it in like such a c- accusatory way. Yeah, and it's just so funny. She's like, "Yeah, of course I did." Uh, they decide that they're going to uh, to head over to the troops. Like, I think this is where they kind of have a little subterfuge where they're like in chains, right? And he's like, oh, "I'll just pretend like I'm escorting you." They're not in chains, which I think is really funny because he's oh. like, "Yeah, I'll just pretend I'm ex- escorting you." Yeah, and like the the stormtrooper walks up and he's like, "Where are these prisoners going?" And he's like. They're prisoners? Like, asking. Yeah. And, 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 just, uh, and Cassius starts talking, and he slaps play. him in the face. Yeah. And he's like, shut <laughs> up. a fresh one for I'm you. taking them to prison. He's like, we'll take them from here. Uh, of course, the jig is up, and they're like, oh, fuck, we're caught. Thankfully, uh, cheer it interrupts as he chants his mantra, the force is with me, and I am with the force. Uh, and then, and then he just, just beats the fucks shit. them up. And it's really, really cool. It's a cool concept because it's the first time I've really, ever really thought, oh, there might be other Force-sensitive people out there that aren't trained as Jedi but kind of can still feel it and still understand that if they let the Force guide them, it'll put them in the right spot. I, I believe that the Guardians of the Wills uh, were people that didn't have enough Force sensitivity to actually become Jedi mm. but still were for, Force sensitive and were picked up by the Jedi Order and they were put in like places to like protect. Mm-hmm. I love how place. vague it is. It's, yeah. like, it's I, like a golf coach. I love that there's the question of, <laughs> <laughs> does like he have the force or does he not? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. He like, definitely does. He definitely does. Yeah. The it's other cool, guy man. doesn't. Well, the other guy doesn't believe him, which yeah. his partner, uh, Baze, I think. Um, but I, I just, it's one of those things where I'm like, if only you could figure out how to take that stick and turn it into a lightsaber. Because he would be a bad Well, he wanted that kyber crystal for a reason, guess right? Guess so. Guess so. Uh, he fucks them up, but a whole new crop uh, come, and he's like, shit. Uh, and then luckily his friend uh, Baze Malbus brought a fucking minigun. So oh, he just such a takes cool all those guys out. Always cleaning up your mess, Chirrut. When are you going to get a fucking blaster? And then Chirrut's like, I'm blind. He's like, well, fat lot of fucking good that force does you if you're blind. You know what I mean? Like, get a blaster. It doesn't matter. Uh, before they call, before they can all get to know each other, a bunch of sauce people come and grab them. Uh, when they get taken back, Jin name drops her daddy, and Chirrut has the best line of the whole fucking movie when they put a blindfold on him. He goes, are you kidding me? I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear it kind of Oscar's like, I'm blind. <laughs> I do also like that we get an, a moment when the uh, Saw Gerrera people are attacking where uh, we see Cassian shoot someone that was throwing grenades, and it was going to land right next to Jin. So he protects Jin, but also becomes an enemy of Saw's people. Yeah, he kills one Where it's like, no, no, he fucking killed one of us. Yeah. 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 And, if you, and that one guy especially like kind of notices, like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we see, see him notice yeah. it, yeah. 
Uh, back at Saw's lair, they meet up with Saw, who uh, uh, Jin gives him shit because apparently Saw left her behind when she was 16. Uh, and he goes, well, people were starting to figure out who you were and that you, you could have been very valuable leverage for them to use against us because once they figured out you were Galen's daughter, they would have used you against me. Uh, then he takes another nip of that sweet, sweet night-night juice and accuses Jin of coming there to kill him. And you're like, wow, this guy's really paranoid. I love that. Yeah, yeah, me too. I think that's a really Did cool moment. Like, it's me? a cool character moment for him where he's like, you see fear in his eyes yeah. and you think that, like... You can tell from his perspective, he thinks that's the end for him right there. Yeah. He's like, "Oh my god, are, are you serious?" You know. But it's also like he's so hurt the betrayal, by the like, yeah. yeah, that like, did they send you to like? There's still doubt whether or not like, but like you get the understanding that like his relationship with her is much deeper than he has with most people. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, what a cool moment. Uh, Jin tells him that she's not there to kill him. She's there just, in fact, to make an introduction and then she's the fuck out. And then Saw's like, wait, you don't want to stick around for this rebellion? Uh, you, can, you can stand to see the Imperial flag ran across the galaxy. And she goes, it's not a problem if you don't look up. <laughs> and he's like, touche. Uh, now I trust you implicitly. Uh, speaking of uh, looking up Nick Way, up in space, Tarkin and Krennic are ready to fire the weapon, and they're getting into it. Who has the bigger dick? Uh, they're having a dick a pissing contest here. And he's like, does Vader know about this? And he's like, st- slow your fucking row, okay? Because I'm Tarkin. Vader isn't fuck Like, I'm saving you from the embarrassment of having Vader and the Emperor watch you fail again. And he's like, I'm not going to fail. And he's like, you're a bitch. Um, <laughs> That's pretty much what he says. Then they talk at, <laughs> yeah. talk at Jetta City. Uh, Cassian discovers the pilot in the next cell. And this dude is bonkers. Uh, Cassian impresses him for the location of no Galen reason. Erso. Yeah, it, it was dumb. They should have just had them him be fi- like fine. Because he's fine like yeah. five minutes later. Yeah. And he apparently gives him the location of Galen Erso anyway. When which I don't remember there being a scene where he's like, he's on this thing. But he just knows at the end of the scene. So This is this is also like your Han. Why can he see totally. now? It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can't believe Very he much so. that back. Yeah. Uh, Saw shows Jin her father's message. And, uh, and in, of course, the Masterstroke we talked about earlier, we discovered that Galen built a flaw uh, purposely deep within the system of the Death Star. Uh, it's a great scene. You'll need the structural plans to the Death Star so you can find the exact location of the reaction mo- uh, reactor module. One blast to any part of it will destroy the entire station. The plans are in the data vault in the archives on Scarif, to which I would have replied, why didn't you just put the plans in the message? Or why not just say this vent? Yeah. You know? Just give but me the fine. grid location of the yeah. vent, and we'll take it from there. I, the idea was that he didn't want to give away all the information in case that that message got intercepted. That's fair. You'd have to have people look through all the plans and like that would take time still. You but know? you assume oh, that... Oh, because the Stardust thing was like a password. Yeah, but you assume that they have enough manpower that even if they clue. intercepted this message they'd be like, look through everything and like just let's look through all the plans again because we'll find it. Mm. They got... Millions of people working for the Empire. There's also, like it's the one 20, thing people that, like, on connects to everything. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, we know it's a oh. reactor module. How many of those are there? Ten? All right, let's start researching background. Maybe just put a little fence up above all the reactor modules from now but on. But how cool was it that, like, now we have an explanation why this vent exists that you shoot at and mm-hmm. blows everything up? Awesome. Uh, meanwhile, outside, the test goes real well. Good one, Krennic. Uh, Jetta City is nuked, and a massive shockwave is coming uh, their way. Cassian breaks everyone out and tells K2SO to come pick them up fast. They break the pilot out, too, and grab Jin, but Saw is too worn out to keep hustling, so he just stays behind. Awesome visuals. I love no all reason. the visuals here, mm-hmm. especially when they're flying through all the debris. Yeah. He couldn't it's, get out of the building cool in time. I feel like they could have picked K2, could have just picked Someone could have picked him up. Yeah. I don't know why they just left him behind. This is a weird choice to me. I was like, what? This guy's a super valuable member. He's been fighting this war for a long time and has a lot of assets, and his name alone like carries so much weight. Yeah. Save his ass. Get him to back. Why would he not want to go back to the Alliance and like help run? Because well, I feel like he's fighting on the wrong side. Like I feel like he's not really with the Alliance. He's an extremist. Mm. They, yeah. t- they, tell, they, they say how he's an extremist. with him, yeah. But... You think he still has value. But either way, they're like, we, we can't afford Forrest Whitaker for the rest of the movie, so just let's kill him off here. Um, they had to kill him off somewhere. He's not as, in the rest of the movies. Of course, yeah. as they run to safety, he calls back toward them, uh, save the rebellion, save the trees. Uh, <laughs> outside, the blast has sent a literal tsunami of, like, earth. I do want to say, though, there will be, a, you know, a, lo- a portion of the people that view this are not core kind of funny fans. Right, so they And they will know. not understand that, but I love it. Well, you know what? They can Google it. <laughs> uh, it sends a giant tsunami of earth away. K2SO brings the ship in just in the nick of time, uh, and then they punch it. Saw takes off his last laughing gas and instead uh, inhales that just wall of dirt coming his way. Uh, Cassian, as they're trying to escape... Just makes this. It, it, I love this part because it's not a big deal they make out of it. It's not like it's a moment. They could have made this like, oh god, we gotta escape and all this stuff. He just goes, fuck it, I'm punching at the hyperspeed. Yeah. And they just punch right, and you see the ship leave the planet in hyperspeed. It's really, really cool. This as, is, as this the, is whole, the U-wing, right? 
Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. So uh, to design the U-wing, 781 different drawings were done by Doug Chiang's design team before they settled on the final look. It's cool. They pretty much went through every single letter. Like, I, there's an image you can see that you see a ton of them, and it's like, what would a C-wing look like? What about a D-wing? What about an E-wing? Like a ton of them. I love the ship, like the design of this. You can see the, you know, how the X-wings have the two different formations. Mm-hmm. I love to, the two different formations of this, where it like kind of yeah. like lips back that's that very way. cool tight uh cassian Can you imagine drawing 700 different versions I mean, if that's my job i'd be like this yeah. is awesome <laughs> just get to i feel like by version, all day just by ride. version like 150 it's no longer awesome you're you gotta figure like, he's got 10 it, people that cool, are doing guys. that guys it's cool like yeah. look at it it looks at good. 150 you're like find one <laughs> we're just we're just making changes for the sake of change yeah. at this point uh cassian makes the jump to hyperspace as the imperials watch the haunting explosion on the planet surface below. It's a fucking beautiful shot mm-hmm. because we hear this, the, the, the cut here is great. It's just crazy. All, everything's going nuts. They punch out and then it's just quiet and you just see the oh, bloom so, of so this great. giant explosion on the planet like miles below them. It's fucking rad. And, and then you see him just be like, like, this is awesome. Yeah. It's like, that's fucked up. And then uh, we, the shot, like when we see the Death Star coming towards Jeddah of the Death Star upside down, so like awesome. addressing what you talked about in yeah. New Hope about how it's always perfect. I feel like this movie does like, this is where I think the fan service stuff like actually is in service to the movie where it's like the dumb little things that we've always wondered or thought. Mm. And, and I feel like that's why Mandalorian's working so well for me too because I feel like they make those smart choices uh, instead of just throwing everything in the kitchen sink of like fucking Baba Yetu or whatever the hell his name is Baba is here. Yetu. It's like, oh, the Death Star is upside down. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Tarkin apologizes to Krennic and tells him, "Hey, man, I was wrong about you. That's awesome. Guess what? <laughs> My bad, bro. Th- thanks for thanks for making this weapon possible. I'm taking control now. Love it. And he's like, uh, "What are you talking about? And, and he's like, "Well, you still fucked up, and there's still a leak out there. And guess what? You got to go plug that leak. And he's like, "What are you talking about? And he's like, "The pilot was sent from a- uh, Adu, the same place that currently houses Galen Erso and his team. And, and he's like, "God damn it, fucking Galen Erso. Uh, Cassian radios back to Yavin Four for new orders. They found Galen Erso. Uh, pr- on Edu, I don't. I, was there a scene where he goes, he's on Edu, or do we just did we just skip past that? I think we the, just skip past Galen. That. Yeah, I don't remember anyone telling Cassian where Galen was. Isn't it Bodhi? Because Bodhi, well, yeah, Bodhi I don't think don't Bodhi ever that. goes. Hey, I got these messages from Galen. Galen's I, on Edu. I think that we just assume that like that it's yeah where that happens, right? Yeah. Uh, so he, he radios back, but the order's still saying kill that traitor piece of shit when you get a beat on him. Uh, the pilot and Jin have a great scene. Your father said I could make things right if I was brave enough, uh, but he goes, but it's too little too late, or is it? Uh, she's seen the message. Cassian doesn't believe it. She's like, I've seen the message. It wasn't too little too late. You delivered it. There's a flaw. We can stop this thing. And Cassian doesn't believe her uh, since she forgot the thumb drive. He's like, do you have the message? She's like, fuck. Ah. You know, it's like when you leave your house, you're like, my uh, cell phone. It's the Damn worst. it. Yeah. Worse. I left my wallet at home right now. I was like, uh, man, if I got stopped by a cop, I'd be like, you'd be screwed. Man. Really, really quick, we got a help from Kebab says, Jin says uh, he's on Edu. She learned it from the message from Galen. Ah, cool. So, there you go. Right, but before that, Cassian calls in and says, we know he's on Edu. And no one told him. Like, we have a whole scene where he's like, go to Edu and kill him. Yeah, but and I, then this next scene, she goes, "I know where he's at. He's because of the message." Happened off. It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. But it's just it's one of those weird things. Where I was like, I don't remember anyone telling him that. How would he have known? It doesn't matter. Uh, we we can assume the pilot let it slip as they were as they were escaping or whatever. Uh, let's see. So uh, Jin wants to send a message about the flaw, but Cassian's like, no, no, we can't send that to the. That's that's too big of a piece of information. We're in deep in imperial territory. If we send that, they'll pick up on the fact that we know we can't risk that. We need to go to Edu and just get your dad. And she's like, cool, I'm all for that. Something I really enjoy about this movie as well is the the choice of planets they go to mm-hmm. and like having them have purpose, where it's like Jetta being this kind of more spiritual thing, but also having the Imperials clearly overtaking it, trying to get like mine all the, the Kyber yeah. crystals, and then have this other planet be the place where they distill it and where they actually like like more factory based. I just think that it's little choices like that that it it makes it feel less like the pulpy, well, we got to go here, we got to go here, we got to go here. It's like, it gives it a bit more well, it's, purpose. It's good galaxy building, you know, yeah. where it's like suddenly all these places have purpose. And instead, like, yeah, they could have just done it there, but it's cool that, like, they have this base that specializes. Because they're not, I'm sure they're also getting kyber crystals from other areas, you know? And it's nice, too, from a visual standpoint. Like, Star Wars always does this, which is great, where you go from, like, an ice planet to a jungle planet to a desert planet. It's cool just to see the different environments. And this, of course, is just this crazy rainy planet of Edu uh, where they land and they go, and it's nuts. Uh, Bodhi tells K2 to stay low and K2 to, to stay underneath the radar. I'm sorry, they don't land. They they get into the atmosphere and they're kind of they're trying to navigate toward it. Right, Bodhi's like the silent cartographer level. In Halo. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> they crash. 
uh, and they lose contact with the Avon Four. Seeing no other choice, uh, uh, General Draven orders the squad of X Wings to go take out uh, Edu. He just goes take a, takes a hit out on Edu. He's like, we don't have a choice. And again, this is one of those moments where I'm like. Yeah, I guess it's believable. If you don't know that your team made it in, you send another team in that are just nuke everything. Kind of. Yeah, I think there's too much to risk. Yeah, there's just too much risk. Uh, Cassian tells everyone to stay back while he and the pilot head up to the ridge to see what they're up against uh, back on the ship. Chirrut asks if Cassian has the face of a killer. And everyone's like, that's weird. Why would you ask that? He goes, because his weapon is in sniper configuration. And Jin's like, fuck, he's going to go kill my dad. I can't let this happen. Um... Up on the ridge, Bodhi, Bodhi points out Galen, uh, but before he can get a shot off, Krennic lands in an even cooler ship than Vader's. Uh, one thing, one, real quick, just to go back to that whole sniper, mm -hmm. it was K2 who said that, and I just thought that that was really weird and kind of, like, you know, cheered saying, does he look like a killer? And then them being like, no, why? Like, I love that whole thing, but then K2 being like, he did leave with his, his gun and sniper configuration. Yeah, I don't feel like he would have, like, K2 and right, Kazian are out. supposed to be like, right, yeah. he's, he's the got partners. No filter, you know? Yeah, I guess. He just yeah. blurts out immediate thoughts, like, oh, yeah, he is a killer. It, it would have been yeah. cooler if Cheer It, or yeah, yeah, yeah. if Baze had said that. Well, who no, the you're fuck right. Baze should have said it. Yeah. yeah, that's a good call. If Baze would have said it, it would have been like, oh, that's cool that he can even know that because yeah, the force or whatever. But that that would have made a lot more sense than the robot. Chirrut's the force K2 one. Baze is the big the gun guy. expert, gotcha. and I feel like Chirrut should have been like like he has face of a killer, and Baze should have been the one that got gotcha. yeah, talked yeah, with yeah. the weapon. Uh, Krennic lands and tells Galen to gather his crew so he can congratulate them on the successful testing of the weapon. But of course, when they all get up there, he orders the guards to kill them unless uh, the traitor comes forward, uh, which Galen does at the very very last second. Um, Cassian has a shot, but after seeing Galen come forward to protect his people, he can't take it. Uh, Krennic fires on them anyway, and then slaps Galen to the ground. And this is the one. This is when it solidifies to Cassian that Galen is actually a good guy, and that Jin's telling the truth here, uh, which is good. Uh, Jin climbs up the platform and then takes out a stormtrooper in what is simultaneously the most elegant, elegant, and incredibly violent takedown I've ever seen in my life. Because <laughs> she like takes his leg out and he falls, hits his head, and then just falls to his death. Like, God <laughs> damn, girl! Let's see it coming. What's up? Uh, let's see, uh, before she can get to her dad, the Alliance fighters begin their attack, attack and blow up the platform. Uh, TIE fighters are dispatched to engage the enemy and all hell breaks loose. Krennic's guards pull, uh, pull him aboard the ship. Uh, Chirrut uses the force to take out a TIE fighter, which crashes into the main Imperial defense cannon, which is a cool scene. Such a cool scene, him pulling back that giant bow and arrow looking... Thing. Yeah, I don't know where he got it from, but it's cool. Uh, Jin reaches her father, who is uh, a little worse for the wear, but is still happy to see her. She tells him that she saw his message, and he's very happy to hear that. He tells her that the thing must be destroyed, and before he can say anything else, he dies. Uh, Shot down by the Alliance. I just love it, man. Yeah. Such mm -hmm. great, great storytelling. Tragic. All this. Cassian blasts his way up to the platform and grabs Jin as Baze lanes down, uh, covering fire from the ridge above. Bodhi and K2 come in with a stolen Imperial ship, and everyone bangs out on the ship. Jin accuses Cassian of going to kill her father. Uh, he had Hades like, I had every chance to pull the trigger, but I didn't. Uh, those, and he goes, when she goes, well, those are Alliance bombs that killed him. And then uh, Cassian's like, I had orders. And Jin's like, and this is that scene I was talking about where she's like, where she's like, you don't, you're following orders. You sound like a stormtrooper. And he said, we don't all have the luxury of deciding when and where uh, we we get to care about something. Suddenly. Suddenly, the rebellion is real for you. Some of us have lived it. Uh, I've been in this fight since I was six years old. And she goes, well, you're not. He's like, you're not the only one who's lost everything. Uh, uh, some of us just decided to do something about it. That's what he says. And that's like a big fuck you today. Anyway, uh, great scene. Krennic heads over to Mustafar uh, to interrupt Darth Vader's jacuzzi time. And boy, is he not happy about it. This shit is naturally warm by the active volcanoes outside. You know how hard that is to pump this shit in? This is my time. That's what I would have told you. Like, my I skin is dry. Really Man, <laughs> this I don't think I've in movie history ever seen a scene that can be this this good and then just utterly ruined by one line. So bad that line. Choke it, uh, on your aspirations. But uh, so stupid. seeing Vader in his little like Cryo tube thing. Yeah, like man, that looks so cool. And having this dude like go and like get him and like have a message, and, but also be fucking full of fear. Yeah, so some fun th things here that I, I was uh, reading about. Gareth Edwards, the director, was like, I one of his few requests re going into the movie is just like, I want the tube that Luke was in yeah. in uh, in Empire, mm. or I guess, yeah, yeah, no, Return of the Jedi. No, Empire. No, Empire. Empire. Yeah, it's the end of Empire. Um, that I want the yeah exactly the that too because I want that and I want Vader and I want to see more of him mm -hmm. like as a like without legs and arms and stuff yeah. just like messed up and like that's super rad and the dude that talks to Vader 
weird inclusion to just have this random guy. Like, we don't really need him to be a named character or anything, but like, I just thought it was kind of out of nowhere because it does leave some questions like, who the fuck is this guy? Theories are that it's one of the weird people that are following Vader in the return of, of in the beginning of Jedi uh, when they first land in the in the big ship and it's like you see the Emperor with the red guys and then it's Vader. Oh, okay. It's just like a bunch of like cloaked black people in, mm-hmm. behind him. Other like like black. admiral admirals or like yeah. other people other ranked officials yeah, I guess. Like just like weird cult people I, yeah. I think is oh, what okay. we're getting there. Uh, uh, Vader of course gets dressed and meets with Krennic and tells him to make sure <laughs> <laughs> make sure the death what? <laughs> he gets dressed. Where are my <laughs> <He> boots? <laughs> I can't find my other sock. <laughs> Krennic's waiting. Uh, and he tells Krennic to make sure the Death Star isn't compromised when Krennic pushes uh, to make sure he's still in charge. Vader just force chokes the shit out of him. And he says, be careful not to choke on your aspirations. Boo. Now, Boo. that's a dumb not- line. But like this scene, I think, is so cool and so fitting of this character of Krennic to be like, Go back to like the boss's boss and be like, hey, you know he's doing this, right? And like it's not fair because like I made and it's like you're such a little bitch. That's yeah. great. And him ch- being choked and like the yeah. way that they showed it was so good. And yeah. just the, the line, line is so the stupid. line and the turn and the showing that he's doing, it's like we didn't need any of that. Yeah. I didn't mind it. Really? Yeah. That seems uh, like the I, type of thing that would bother you more than the anybody. Line is so yeah, I don't, stupid. it's it's a dumb line, but I mean this scene is kind of uh Unnecessary to begin with, but it, I think it's important that we saw Vader before we see him at the end. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because you got to set up the character a little bit here, even though we all know who Darth Vader is. But I felt, I felt largely this scene was just included to be like, "Hey, look, it's Vader." And I'm like, "All right." Once, once we broach, once we hit that line, I'm like, "Have him fucking levitate something. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's I, Vader." I, I halfway do- agree with you because I feel like j- we didn't need it. Like Vader could have just been at the end, and we would have all been totally fine with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I agree with Kevin where it's like it is Krennic's story of him going to the boss's mm-hmm. boss and being mm-hmm. a bitch. And it also, I think it does establish that now Vader's like, oh, I should be on the lookout of what's happening here. You know, and like I think that this is Interesting. the no. major reason that he appears at the end where it's like now he's aware that something's going on where before he didn't or he wasn't. He should uh, just walk back in it. What a funny choke. <laughs> <laughs> And then it's like that's what like yeah give us you, more choke puns Vader like <laughs> do you think that if uh, Krennic had ma- like m- like laughed at the joke Vader would be like, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was good <laughs> like around the corner the dude in the club was like good one <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you don't have to humanize Vader like let that be Return of the Jedi's joke well, I mean, you know what I mean Vader's had some like not z- this is a zinger and, that, yeah. and that's what you guys are responding to I totally get it I'm not saying it's a great line but like Vader's had moments like that before where he's just like remember when he choked the guy out and then the other guy he's like well you're in command now and the guy's like fuck like there are those moments I think that's what they were trying to go for here it just did it I think it was a little I, too ham- yeah. heavy handed a little too ham fisted yeah. I've but, always uh, thought those moments were not meant to be comedic and more like well, they're fucked up yeah how util- utilitarian he can be and like how quickly like this is done you're in charge don't fuck it up or that's gonna happen to you and I think I, and I don't wanna I'm uh I don't want to render this criticism, but I'll say it. I don't think James Earl Jones' performance here is the strongest that it's been with a lot. And I think a lot, a little bit of that's the dialogue, but a lot of it's the blocking of the scene and the fact that it just kind of goes on a little too long. And it's just not as intense as it should have been. I, I also think it's just probably due to age as well. He just sounds yeah. off. He sounds he just off doesn't sound, It was the same thing when you when you hear him in Lion King. You're yeah. like, oh, you sound yeah. old. You and don't it, sound it, like a spry dad. You sound like a grandma. And it reminds now. you, and it's kind of depressing, of like, fuck, James Earl Jones is really old. And you just know. you dread the day. I know. It's going to be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully they can just... Uh, Keep him in hibernation and bring him out for Vader and then put yeah. him back in. Just let him sleep a little bit. Bring him out. Uh, the Alliance, meanwhile, over on Yavin 4, debates what they should do, but nobody wants to believe there's a Death Star. Some deny it. Some want to scatter the forces or surrender. Jin tells them all that they're being a big bag of wusses. Uh, she wants them to send their best people to Scarif, and, but Jimmy Smith is there too, which is cool. So uh, Admiral Akbar number two, uh, who's Admiral Raddus, uh, who want, he's like, we should put up a fight. But since they don't have the p- full support of the council, Mon Mothma puts the poo-poo on their plans. Uh, Jin tells Baze and Shurit that the council didn't believe her. But luckily, Cassian did. He's turned a new leaf. And he's like, you know what? I've done some terrible shit in the name of the rebellion. If we give up now, it'll all have been for nothing. I've rallied a bunch of hard-looking motherfuckers behind me. And we are going to go with K2 uh, over to Scarif. Uh, and then he says, Jin, I'll be there for you. Uh, and I love this line. Because as they're about to leave, K2 goes, Jin, I'll be there for you. 
Cassian, Cassian said, said I had to. to. <laughs> uh, uh, I I feel like a lot of people have the pro- uh, like have had problems with the fact that like she goes from not supporting the rebellion to very quickly supporting and being like the loudest advocate of it. I feel like rewatching it now and trying to pay more attention. I think that they did a good job setting it all up and having her and Cassian have that thing of like, well, you're not doing anything to stop this. You're just letting everything go by. Yeah. At least I'm doing something. Really like um, helps that like. That's why I think we get so much intensity from her at this moment. I thought I thought it was believable. I've seen criticisms like that, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I get that it happens a little fast, but to her, she needed that moment of closure with her dad to be all in on the rebellion, mm-hmm. and seeing that he made that sacrifice, and then see, and then her saying, "Hey, we found the plans," and he says, "You have to destroy it." Mm-hmm. That ga- I think to me, that's the powerful moment where she goes, "Cool, I'm all in." And then when she goes back, I didn't. I, granted, she's talking like she's been leading a rebellion for the last eighty years. Mm-hmm. But I don't mind that, like, that impassioned and emboldened speech that she gives yeah. where she's like, you have to believe me. What I think is cool, though, also is that I think they set up very, very well where there is a little bit of doubt. Like, your dad was the guy that built this thing. Why should we believe you? We don't have the message. And the only people that do believe her are the ones that have been fighting alongside the entire time. I think it's totally fine. A bit rushed, but to mm. me, I'm like, oh, fuck, let's get to the end. Let's, but again, let's I think that it, while it does feel a bit rushed, I feel like there's a good amount of setup to it yeah. where it's just like, oh, okay. She's turning a new leaf and really doubling down on uh, fighting with the Rebellion. Uh, They take off in the stolen Imperial ship. And, uh, man, I love all the costume designs in here. I mentioned it before, but I I, I love that they were just like, fuck it, let's make them look like like Vietnam War era, like badasses. And then, because they're going to go fight in a jungle, which is the coolest thing ever as well. Or not a jungle, but like a, on the desert or the beach. Um, tropical, I guess. Tropical I guess. beach, Thank yeah. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Uh, before the ship can take off, the dispatch radios in and asks for their call sign. And Bodhi doesn't exactly think fast, but he's like, uh, Rogue One? And K2SO is like, you fucked that up. <laughs> like, just FYI. <laughs> Just to let you know. Uh, Mon Mothma asks Jimmy Smith. She's like, she pulls him aside. We have a cool little scene here that's needless, but total fan service, and I'm okay with it. See, this to me is not needless. This to me is is good fan service, where it's kind of like just it's subtle. It's subtle, and it's like kind of just adding. Or at they least, don't name things. They yeah. don't like like. They, it's kind of one of those if you know, you know, and if yeah. you don't know, this adds a lot more context. It's at least subtler than throwing uh, CGI Leia face into your face really hard. You know that is fair. Uh, she she asks Jimmy to send her old friend a message saying we're gonna probably need his help on this one and yeah get that it's Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, she goes you have someone you can trust deliver the message and he goes I sure do I trust this person with my life hell yeah because she's my baby one of the greatest uses of the score where you, you hear the Force theme and then you hear it transition to Leia's theme awesome uh, they approach Scarif and Bodhi does some fast talking to get them through the shields uh, and this is cool I mean. It's a little bit of an homage to like uh, to Return of the Jedi, but of course in Return of the Jedi when they did this, Vader knew who they were, yeah. so we led with her on purpose. But in this one, the guy's just a fucking idiot that works the base. I get it. A lot of ships in and out. Also, Edu did, did just get destroyed, so it's kind of believable that they had been rerouted there without being told. You got to figure there's a lot of bureaucracy here that shit slips through the cracks a lot, mm. even though their uniforms are very tight. A lot of red tape. A lot yeah. of red tape. Uh, let's see. Uh, they do some fast thing. Once they get... Through the shield generator, uh, the tension's broken a little bit to celebrate. Cassian and Jin have a let's bang real quick before we die out there look toward each other, and it's fucking hot. Like, Tim, is it hot or is it super hot? It's, it's pretty hot. I, it's, I'm all right with how they dealt with them, but I just felt like it was kind of unnecessary. It but I also tw- get I, that it's like a, it's, it didn't, they didn't push it far enough that it was a, an issue. Well, yeah. But They have a moment where it's... We either like each other or there is attraction there, but I'm glad they didn't push it any farther than that. I could have done without this. I think that the I think that the two actors just had that chemistry together where they were like, we're yeah. two great looking people. I'll buy that. And I'm like, okay, I want to watch these people have sex. Um, yeah, same. But I like that on the <laughs> be- on the beach later, it's not romantic. No, not at right, all. right, right. It right. is. But that's we, why we, I feel we like have an scene... affection for each other. Right. But and because it's like, this is the end. This is like humanity it. sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, Which I thought was like, I'm like, thank God that they didn't. Ki- I thought they perfect. were gonna make him kiss, and I'm like, don't fucking don't yeah. do that. Because no, 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 that would just no. destroy all the all the stuff you set up with these two. Uh, once on the surface, they see the Citadel Tower. If the plans are anywhere, they're probably gonna be in there. Jin gives a Braveheart speech, uh, which honestly d- does not instill confidence at all. Because <laughs> she's like, <laughs> we're all gonna die, <laughs> but don't worry, we'll get the plans out. And the guy in the back's like, what was that first part? The first part. No, go back to the first part. We're all going to die. Okay, just letting you know. I'm out. I'm out of here. Get me out of here. I'm going to go on the other side of the planet. Uh, Cassian tells everyone the plan. K2 himself and Jin will go look for the plans while Chirrut uh, and Baze cause a diversion and draw the stormtroopers out. 
Uh, they trick some Imperial idiots into coming aboard and then knock them out and take their uniforms. And I like it because Jin's like tiny, but she's so wearing the tiny. cool little thing. I love it. And then I also love that they did a touch where the visor opens and you can see your eyes like later. Well, that's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, like they also helmet. very violently beat the shit out of these people where like the helmet kind of comes off. Yeah. One dude where it's like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they enter a cool people mover that takes them to the tower. And then K2SO starts to say, I have a bad feeling about this, but they cut him off. Which I love. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Everyone can't ha- say that all the time. It's a nice little way of saying we get it. Mm. Be, I know. We're, see, we're I, stopping with the homages. I, I like them saying it in every movie. I feel like this movie was good because it's not a saga movie. It's an anthology movie. Yeah. But it's also a nod to like, we get it. Yeah. We say it, we say yeah, it in every movie. Totally. Well, it's a little well, it's a little, little side. We're like, Shh, I thought it was fun. Talking. I thought it was it's fun. fun. Yeah. I, I, uh, do, I would like to imagine that one of these stormtroopers or one of these uh, people, these uh what do they call in Fallen Order? These imps? Mm, yeah. Empire or whatever? Uh, I, I think it would be really cool if one of them was like Finn. Like we were mentioning how Finn is like, you know, obviously a rebel and he wants to leave the Empire. If one of these guys like is about to get his ass kicked, like, no, 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 wait, what? Well, I'm on your, let's do this. Like, yeah. I'm down. I don't like it either. <laughs> hey, head, let's go. I fucking hate this shit. My, my dream is to open a coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, Cassie and Jen sneak through the Citadel, and it's a fucking so cool seeing the the original like trilogy style hallways mm-hmm. uh, and the little droids and come across. I know we've seen it a lot, but I just love that this specific era, they found a way to go back to the X-Wings and all the look and all the Stormtrooper costumes of my youth. It's, it's, it's cool to see it in 4K. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or, oh, you know, man. like a, well, a cool. with modern cameras. And, and yeah. cool to see it with the budget that Lucas originally wanted for it, but didn't necessarily yeah. have. They go through like eight different hallways. You're seeing grand, all the scope yeah. and all this cool yeah. shit. You're seeing more droids like K2SO. You're seeing all these other stormtroopers and all these other like costumes and stuff that you're like, what's that? What's that? What's that? It's just cool. Um, Cassian orders the rebels. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So as they sneak through, K2 uh, is like, he's like, we got to find the, like, how to get there. And he's like, you know what you got to do. So K2 literally eats the fucking brain of another droid. He's like, rah, rah, rah. Uh, and then he goes, okay, well, uh, I've, I've got the plan, the, the path to the vault, but it only puts 89 stormtroopers between us and the data, which gives us a 33% chance of success. And I like that he's constantly giving them the odds, yeah. just like C-3PO used to do. L- a little bit too much in this movie, but it's okay. This- I think every time they do it, it's funny. <laughs> uh, so Cassian goes, cool, I got a plan for that. He orders the rebels outside to light shit up, and uh, the diversion does the trick. Stormtroopers start uh, pouring out of the Citadel in droves, including uh, some desert resort stormtroopers, who you have to assume serve great cocktails. <laughs> uh, these guys are like, Okay, cool. You got all Stark white stormtroopers, and you got some guys in khakis. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, Tarkin gets Love they're on the beach. Yeah. Uh, it's such a different look for anything we've seen from Star Wars, and it, especially for it being the darkest Star Wars, for it to be on the brightest set we've seen, with the exception of Hoth, I guess. Uh, very, very cool. And it's cool. And and again, hearkening back to like warm, old war movies, this is like the... the, the Normandy. The, no, this is more. I mean, I'm thinking more. This is like the the Pacific campaign where they had to take like the the tropical islands, yeah. like Guam, mm-hmm. and the you know you had the Midway. You don't have to take Midway, but like when they had to fight against the Japanese, you have that. That's that's what kind of, this kind of feels like, mm-hmm. which is really really cool. And uh, the, the ATATs are also like different colors and well, know. they're different. The AT ACT, I think, right? Oh yeah, because yeah, they have the, the like the cargo, cargo choice, yeah. Yeah. Cargo, right? Yeah. Which is cool. Uh, Tarkin gets the message that Scarif is under attack and puts uh, two and two together. The original plan is the Death Star on Scarif. Yeah, well, let's blow that motherfucker up. I like that their plan, their <laughs> their solution to everything is just blow it up. Blow it well, up, it's man. just I, I think that like with this uh, the Death Star being basically complete, it's whatever. We don't need this shit. Like you know, let's just go destroy it. But there's gotta be someone. No one will it's have their new but toy. Dude. They're be, just yeah. stoked to use it. It's like when you've got your car for the first time and you're just like, I just want to drive. <laughs> But you have to imagine that they're like, uh, Target, pump the brakes because we have other plans for other giant weapons there that are like really important also, but don't blow it up. Also, there's like a billion people on this planet. Like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, but kill them but all. They don't but give they, a shit they're about only that. using the city blow up version, right? They don't, like, it's true. I yeah. mean, that is an important. Yeah, he, they're, he not, they're not like planetarily war. blowing up. Alderaan is the first time they ever test it. And, and yeah. he, does, he does say that where he goes, when, when, he, when they test it the first time, he goes, I want a more measured, like controlled test. Mm-hmm. And that's when they blow up Jetta. And then, of course, we get the shot later when the Death Star is coming up over the horizon. It's fucking terrifying. Fucking cool. Uh, let's see. Yavin 4 also catches wind of what's going on in Scarif, and that's just the momentum that Mon Mothma needs to send the fleet in, which we get a little cute cameo. includes R2-D2 and C-3PO. And I love it. It's just enough where he's like, we're going there. Nobody ever tells me anything. That's it. We don't, yeah, need, to, we don't I, need to see I enjoyed him. it. R2 doesn't mm-hmm. need to come out from the fucking wings and save someone's ass and shock someone. Jetpack. Jetpack. We nah. just see him there. We're, we're like, there. oh, cool. cool. That's how they got there. 
We didn't need to know that. They could have just started on Leia's ship. doesn't matter. It's cool to see that little touch. As the saw goes here, uh, Rogue One sets up how Luke eventually gets the call sign Rogue f- uh, Red Five. Uh, the original Red Five, Pedrin Gal, was killed during the battle over Scarif, meaning that when Luke gets involved with the Rebel Assault on the Death Star, he takes up the vacancy in Red Squad. Oh, that's awesome. So cool. Which is great. <laughs> and Wedge and Tilly's makes a cameo of sorts. The voice actor for the character, David Ankrum, was brought in to act as the public address voice for the scenes featuring the Rebel base. Uh, he can be heard telling the Rebels to board their ships. That's awesome. Uh, as a bloody land war ensues down uh, down on the beaches, K2, uh, Cassian, and Jen hack the vault door. Uh, Bodhi pulls a nice trick with the radio and just starts like telling everyone, oh, we're on this platform, we're on this platform. And everyone's like, what the fuck's going on, which is cool. Uh, Chirrut and Baze run uh, as the entire rebel fleet comes out of hyperspace. Above them, uh, Admiral Vadis has, has all the squ- uh, squadrons call in. And this is just a cool scene. I love when they do this. Red leader standing by, mm-hmm. blue leader, gold leader, all this mm-hmm. stuff. I would want to be on red because red is the coolest squadron, but let's be perfectly honest, blue is dope as shit. Blue is the dope. Blue, going back to a fact be with you from A New Hope, it was supposed to be blue squad, and they couldn't because of the blue screen yeah, effects. They did red. So that's why in this movie they're like, we're fucking using blue. And red one very, is cool, though. Very, very cool thing is that so many of the pilots here are actual old footage from that's A crazy. New Hope that weren't used. Really? Yeah. Oh, you didn't notice that? Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them are... Old, it's old footage of people. Dude, in the, uh, I talk. thought yeah, that dude's actually... mustache was period correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that's the mustache thing too. Is Gareth Edwards was like, "Hey, for as many people as possible, grow out sideburns. We want this to look seventies. Yeah, which is yeah. cool. That's cool. yeah. Like a that's lot of the awesome. the squad leaders were the actual like actors from the original movie. With you think the they got reason. paid again? No, I'm like. I, they I'm got paid sure, for that footage. I'm sure their uh, family got paid again. Yeah, probably. I'm sure that those guys are not around anymore. And you could even tell because the. the the way that they voice those lines are so old school. Played but it works. Yeah. It, it's so, I, I didn't like, even yeah. know. I was like, oh, oh, this is so... hat over here. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has that weird way of acting. You know, I wish back, she was Gary back Wood in the though. day. Oh. That would have been cool. <laughs> God damn, that would have been cool. That's a bummer that he, like, that scene got cut. I hope someday we can see deleted scenes of Gary. Um, <laughs> flip and switch. Yeah. And like, Gary, don't do that. <laughs> with, gr- with green in the back, and then of course our asshole audience will take all the green out and just put Tim's face floating around. He'd, yeah. be, so, he'd be so mad about something, Gary. Like up there in space, he'd be pissed off about something. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't have Tam Tams. <laughs> uh, Admiral Radis orders the fighters down to the surface before they close the shield gate, uh, and a few of them make it a few before they close, and some of them just bounce off that fucking thing, and oh, it's so good. sad. It's really cool. Uh, and then uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. What does that mean? It means they're going to transmit the plan. Okay, so uh, they go, and uh, what is it? I, I think I missed the spot here, but essentially they go and they, they they find the plans, or they go to the vault and they're like, "We got to transmit these things. We can't get the shield gates closed." So that, so instead of being able to take them off the planet, we're stuck here. We got to transmit these plans. What does that mean? What we got to get? This is where it's a little bit weird because you're like, okay, so we're stuck here because the shield gate is closed. Mm-hmm. But in order to transmit the plans, we have to close. We have to open the shield yeah. gate. So if you open the shield gate, why don't we just get in a ship? And fly through when it's open. I was wondering that too. There must be an explanation that I missed. That we no. missed. No, I think they just wanted the three planes of action, and these people were committed. But you would think they could have just called back to Bodhi and be like, "Bodhi, get the message out, and then bring the ship over here, and we'll get you the plans. We'll fly away for a while, while everyone else happens. Then once that shield gates open, we'll but get up and jump." Bear, in keep an eye on the chat. Uh, I, uh, my my thing is uh, like they have that specific like. Uh, Car SD card is the best word that I can come up with. Uh, okay. Like maybe that's like an Empire like only kind of thing. Like that uh, hardware is something that only like Empire technology can read. So maybe it was just a thing of like we need to have it like tra- digitally transferred through our system so we can have our um, uh, hardware computers and but shit. But see, like, that doesn't make sense though because their original plan was to take it and leave, and it wasn't until yeah. it closed that they're like, oh yeah. fuck, now we need to yeah. transfer. I just think they needed an excuse to trap these people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the, 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 like, the issue was there was like a full-on war happening downstairs. Like the odds of them being able to go down, escape, and then take a ship out like, Without are very slim. Shot down. Yeah. Yeah, like that's instead, a good point. go up to the antenna, hope that the signal gets – like uh, they, they break down the shield and they can send out the signal. Because like people are running down and out to fight at the beaches, not up, right? Well, either way, uh, they they radio over to Bodhi and say, "Look, you got to get a message out." But in order to do that, we got to tether into the system, the network. So you got to figure out a way to get us tethered 
in there so we can send up that thing, which gives Bodhi something to do. Uh, K2SO spots a squad of stormtroopers, so he locks, uh, he closes the door, locking Jin and Cassian into the vault, as he, and then he tries to pull Han Solo, which does not work at all. So he just picks them up and thrashes them. Similar to how my friend Todd used to do to my friend Clay, because Todd was like 200 pounds and Clay only weighed 130. So Todd used to pick him up by his backpack and then slam him down on the ground, and it was very violent, but we all laughed. Um, he was fine. He didn't oh, get okay, hurt. Cool, cool, he would just pick him up because he couldn't do anything. He'd just put him down on the ground. Got it. It was fun. I, uh, he would, sometimes he would slap the backpack too, and the weight would just pull him down. <laughs> um, God, I lost my train of thought because you started talking about Todd. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the TIE fighters scramble and start taking on X Wings in space as they attack. Uh, they start attack runs on the shield gate. Uh, Cassian and Jin search the building for pro- uh, the, the, the vault for project names, and Jin comes across one called Stardust, and she's like, that's where Nailed it is. It. Uh, the TIE it is. fighter designs of the ones that are closer to the beach, uh, they only They're have like flatter, the, right? the, the top half yeah. of, the, of the things coming out. And they designed that to make them look like the Apache helicopters from mm. like war movies it's and fucking stuff. Awesome. Uh, really Wars quick, while she's going through file names and stuff, there's one called hyperspace tracking. Hyperspace uh, tracking yeah. and dark cool. s- saber? Dark yeah, uh, dark saber, which I, might be a, refer- a reference to Mandalore, but I don't want to get too into it just because it's real nerd shit. We, yeah. um, cool stuff, though. When he tells, when Cassian tells Bodhi to figure it out, figure out a way, like, if I were Bodhi, I would have just panicked and died. Like, I I could not in any of, situ- like, with that much pressure on me, when Tim asked me to make a thumbnail, I have 40,000 questions. Like, where do the letters go? Where do, what, 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 what image? I don't know what you want me to do, Tim. You have, you're putting so much on me right now. Like, it, when he just like, figure it out, Bodhi, I would have been like, bro, I don't know, man. Like, I don't fucking know. What do you think the odds of you going, like, if your way of figuring it out would you just look over and the camera racks over to the, the seat of the, the ship and you're like, I'm going to take this thing oh, out of here. Later. I'm just going to go. <laughs> I, I, I figured it out. I'm gonna tell it myself. See you later. I would have been asking stormtroopers for help. <laughs> That's <laughs> so funny. Hey man, uh, can you help me for a second? Dude? Hey, get away. <laughs> uh, let's see. Outside K2 is icing people left and right, but he gets overrun by stormtroopers, so he takes it upon himself to lock Jin and uh, Cassian in to uh, into the vault, and he tells them they're gonna have to climb. Uh, he manages uh, as a uh, Tell them the climb. Voice box is changing. It starts changing. It's really, really sad. Yeah. They have to climb up the thing. There's a, there's a, a dish at the top of the tower they can get to. If they can get there, they can transmit the plants out there. Um, but before uh, and after, right after he, t- he tells them that, he takes one to the heart and dies. And it's Fuck, actually so pretty cool. sad. We see like the light go out in his eyes. And you're yeah. like, God damn, man. Uh, he takes out a lot of people. Beforehand. He fucks a lot of I people. I love that, yeah. It's tight. Uh, Jin blows the glass out of the server, and she and Cassian uh, jump over onto the rack and start climbing it up. I just think the visuals here are cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, outside shit. This is, is such a weird thing. It's, I'm not, it's not a complaint at all. It's just something that I noticed. Is this the first time we've seen glass break in Star Wars? Yeah. Because something about it felt weird, where it's just like, I don't. I don't know. Like no, we of course saw there's glass, glass break at uh, Revenge of the Sith, right? The, oh, the, the big window. Ass window, yeah, windshield thing. Sure. And, and yeah, you're right. Yeah. But you would. You think, are right. You yeah. would think to yourself, why, if you have shield generators, would you need glass? There was anymore? just something about it that that felt out of universe, but yeah. it didn't take me out of it. I was just shield like, oh. and then she got failed. shot, and she did a fucking uh, <laughs> neo. <laughs> like, but if a shield generator fail, yeah, I guess that's true. Then. You know but like I mean? a shield generator failing, I would rather take that over a piece of glass that you could just throw something through. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, sure. I'm like, this is a super ultra secret vault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, uh, another thing that uh, Gareth Edwards stated is the design of the the way that that tower works, where you put your two hands in and kind mm-hmm. of like. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the, the, the server rack, which is cool because you know what it looked like? It looked like an old school server rack for tape, uh, deck. tape decks. Yeah. For, for old networks where they have to go up, get it, I, and then I plug it into I think that that's thing. exactly what it was meant to be. It was yeah. a reference yeah. between that and to George Lucas's first movie, the, the THX. THX, whatever. Like, there's a scene where they have something very similar to Oh, that. cool. It looks really cool to control. Yeah. <laughs> it does look fun. But <laughs> it, it looks like fun, also yeah. I'd be really bad at it at first. Yeah. And then never get good at it. It's like when they introduce the right stick for in like first person shooters and yeah. like, I don't know how to control this. Yeah, like, well, I'm used to just know. being on the thumb. Uh, outside shit is not looking so hot. Bodhi uh, has to he, he has to make the connection, but someone needs to throw them. He's like, I made the connection, but someone has to throw the master switch. Uh, Jen pulls 
the uh, successfully pulls a hard drive out of uh, of its little spot where it's stuck, and then she sticks it on her belt, which I thought was cool. She yeah, just, just clips it on bad. like a utility belt. Uh, but as she does so, Krennic and his goons attack them. Uh, Cassian takes a couple out, but Krennic puts them right in his shoulder, and Cassian presumably falls to his death. Uh, Jen sees it and goes, fuck it. I got to head up to the dish uh, outside. Chirrut takes it upon himself to Wait. throw the switch as everyone's pinned down. What's up? We see him not fall to his death, though, right? He lands on a platform, yeah. and it's one of those things. Where it's yeah. like, oh, but it okay. also comedically land, uh, like lasts quite a bit. Yeah. Because you hear like, doom. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so but like like they, they thought should we put a cat screeching yeah. <laughs> in this but no we'll take yeah, that and we'll the, the, like I can imagine this lasting for like a minute in a YouTube like funny video where it just you just keep on hearing sound effects and That's stuff really but funny. is this where Bodhi has has he died yet either way I think his, uh, Bodhi close, dies in about a second I think yeah. a lot of his acting leading up to this is phenomenal mm -hmm. his, his desperation and his line delivery I think is just so well done oh, man when he's talking to sauce people like you, you feel that how a yeah, is, you know? I think all of the deaths are so perfectly active done. stuff. It's just it is very unfortunate that there's a master switch. It's like what? Like the Bodhi having to get the, the cable and stuff. I'm like, I could buy that for what they're doing with the radio. They're being yeah. a master switch. Where's the master? Where's the master switch? Uh, it's inside of the uh, the the. Uh, it's over the, on a different platform. Tim, yeah. a lot of Why? a lot of things have master switch. We have a master switch right now. You flip I it. Understand? Ninety percent of the studio turns off. We have a master <laughs> stomping point too. You want to switch? You want to hit that? We fixed that. We, uh, that has been resolved. Um, this this. Is one of the few parts of the movie that I was like, all right, we're just needlessly putting complications in front of the actors to give some of the side characters something to do. They needed to have a cool scene with Chirrut. And to be fair, this is an awesome scene, but I really wish that Bodhi did. Like, we have a scene where Bodhi has to run the line out and all that stuff's happening. He's taking fire. He's like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And all that stuff. It's just one too many things where I'm like, uh, I, I love all this. I love I how love many love things there are. I just don't love the things. Yeah. yeah. It's just, they're endless MacGuffins. They're endless mm. just complications for the sake of complications. And it's forgivable because the next thing we get is where Chirrut is everyone's pinned down and he goes and he starts uttering the mantra, I am one with the Before force. Before that, the though, force is with me. the one guy, like, he's like, fuck it, I'm going. And, and then he gets shot immediately. Shot. Shot. Such a great build up to him doing this. Yeah. And he just, in, in like, what are the, one of the greatest moments of this whole movie, he, he just walks out mm. as he believes that I'm one with the force. And for whatever reason, they just can't hit him. Mm. He's not like serpentining at all. He's no. just walking in a straight line toward the thing. And the stormtroopers are trying to shoot at him, and it's just not working for some reason. So and cool. it's so Why cool. Why can't we hit him? Because I'm just they, real bad at shooting. Be, <laughs> yeah. Because if, all of us are. <laughs> in the hands of some a, a different director, someone would have shouted, his Metaclorian counts too high, or some shit like that, you know, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's this mythical thing. It's mysterious. We don't know. He just, he's in touch with this, this beautiful power that gets him to the switch. Does it save him forever? No. No. He has to, and I love that, that shot where he gets to it and then has to still blindly look for the switch itself. So, like, the force got him there, but he still has to, like, go that last little bit himself. It's beautiful. Pushes the switch. Transmission goes through. Hey, we're, we're, we're tethered up. It's great. And then he just takes one. I That's wonder it. how the scene would so have played beautiful. out had he not suggested himself be blind. Hmm. You know, I don't know. But he's I mean, I would have been. Like, I, no, I would. I think there would have been dodging involved. But like, I'm glad that he suggested that he was blind because I felt like that added so much to this character. Yeah. And like, it made this scene. Like, I I think this whole sequence. Uh, where we start seeing these deaths is beautiful. Like, what a good job giving each character a little moment and then saying goodbye. Yeah. You know? Uh, I apologize. I said he took one of the chests. He does not actually. Right when he flips the switch, someone blows up the junction box and he gets he gets mm. the concussion, knocks him down. Uh, Bodhi, the transition's made, and this is where Bodhi's sh ship. He looks over. He's like, "That's awesome for Galen." Looks over, and the grenade comes in, and it's great because you guys are right. Like, they're not overstated deaths. Mm -hmm. We have a moment in like Saving Private Ryan where Barry Pepper is just fucking icing people from the bell tower as a sniper. Saying prayers, and then he as he as he go, mm -hmm. he's saying the prayers and he's icing people, and he looks over and he sees the tank. Aiming so at him, aiming. And, him like, and he just it. knows. Yeah. And he he tries to scream to the guy, Parker, get out! Get out! And oh, boom. God. That's it. What we don't see his character ever again. What a moment. And that's yeah. this moment for me where he just sees it and then he just cuts to the outside and the ship blows up. Yeah. Bodhi's gone. We don't yeah. need to see him like, oh, I'm dead. We know. He's dead. Yeah. And Sad. I love that they, would they have Bass to be this character that now has to live with Turret being gone and just the way that he deals with it, I think is just so Perfect. awesome. Yeah. It's, Beautiful. Yeah. I love that, that with each of these characters dying, it wasn't just kind of the same thing over and over and over. They completed their thing and now they're dead. It's like they did that for these two. But then it, you get like K2SO is like just take a motherfuckers out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you see Turret do the do the thing and then die. Then you see um, Brody. Bodie. 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 Bodie yeah. Do the thing and then he die. sends out the message. 
die. And then it gets to Bazin. He doesn't need to do yeah. what he does. No. And it's awesome. His is but, just uh, purely I, revenge. I will say, all three of them die from explosions. Three explosion deaths in a row. There's a lot of explosions, though. But yeah, um, I mean, that's, they're, and but they, they die from also gets war, taken down by grenades shots. and like yeah. yeah. Uh, I will also say that that just uh, just a shout out to the name Bodhi, which is uh, the short for the Bodhisattva, which we know from. That's right, Tim. Point Break. There you go. That was Patrick Swayze's there name. Wow. And if I'm not mistaken, I fr- can you look up what the 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 etymology of that word Barrett Bodhi it's from Bodacious? Is that no? <laughs> I don't think it is. Don't <laughs> look up look up Bodhisattva. I think I'm Bo saying it right. Zypha. Did you and dream this? <laughs> because, well, look up. Just type in Bodhi, Patrick Swayze, point break, <laughs> meaning, question mark. Sure I think that name means like Google the person who is the, the prophet or the, the, the foreseer of the future or the one that brings the whatever. It's, there's a name to it. Gia has there's a friend, Pooja, whose son's middle name is Bodhi. So that may be. But the Buddha, yeah, Google that word right there. The Buddha, the It says it right here. Z- oh. Wait, Bodhisattva is a term in the Buddhist uh, region. Religion, <laughs> meaning an enlightened being who, out of compassion, forgoes nirvana in order to save others. Whoa, so that's a good call, Nick. Yeah, so I, I, I feel like that name would have fit more of, um, what's his face, his character? Kazian? Taz? Cheer it. Cheer it, there you go. <laughs> K2S. Maybe. Well, either way, it's just I like that he has to, <laughs> in order, he ta- in not taking a safer yeah. route, he goes and he does. Uh, yeah. Also, I like to believe that they had no idea what that meant, and he just chose, na- Gary chose to name that character after Patrick Swayze in Point Break. Because <laughs> that's even more meaningful to me, <laughs> if that's the case. We'll ask Gary next time he's in. Uh, I think Bodhi, I think I had Bodhi's death scene a little too early here. Uh, either way, ba- uh, Baze rushes out to help his friend, but it's too late. Shirt tells him to look for the force, and Baze will always find him. And then he dies. That's a really great moment. And then Baze goes, and then Baze picks up the mantra, and he goes, I'm with, the force is with me, I'm one with the force. Hell yes. And, and, and like, this is the one scene where we get, like, one of these characters actually dying, and, like, but it is motivation for the other dude to get up and just start cleaning house with that goddamn cool gun he has. And, by the way, the people here he's killing is the uh, the Death Troopers. Yeah. Because they have landed now, because uh, Krennic had ordered them in, and he just starts killing all these guys, and they're like, it's a cool little battle. Uh, of course, Bodhi- also, the first time in the movies we see, like, a machine gun of lasers. Yeah. But not only a machine gun of lasers, but he's got, like, the trash can on his back that's got, you assume, all the ammunition in it, or it's whatever the energy yeah, is. Batteries. Yeah, Vulcan Raven. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bodhi gets the message through. If, Ra- uh, if Admiral Radis can get the shield down, they can get the plans through. Uh, Radis notices, looks over and notices that a Death Star has, has been disabled. It's lost power, and he gets a great idea. Call in the hammerhead. Uh, sorry, what did I say? Yeah, Not that's right. Yeah. Star Destroyer is disabled. He calls in the hammerhead Corvette. But the coolest daddy name has ever. a plan. <laughs> what a <laughs> cool name. Coolest thing. But also, it's not just that he noticed. It's like that was the plan. They, yeah, they, like they they sent the the round of the the Y wings Y wings in yeah. to do the, all the electromagnetic oh, shit I didn't to like that. take it out. Yeah. Smart. So then it was dead, and then they did this, the hammerhead Corvette. You're like, what is happening? And then it's the coolest thing. But Which it's also great, one of, great choreography. It's also one of those things animation wise where when we see the X wing hit that shield. That sort of makes us think, oh, well, I didn't think physics to work that way in this yeah. universe. And then you see a hammerhead Corvette that when it, I guess the way it's built, the structure of it or whatever, when it, if I see it hitting a Death Star, I expect it to crumble. But for whatever reason, the structural integrity of it's so strong that it's able to push. I think that's I really love cool. that we get <laughs> two like it hits it and it doesn't move do and much, then it starts and then it boosts yeah. and, and it, you can see that yeah. progression to hit into the other one. And I love the way that it goes. Yeah, oh, oh it just you can over. like God. feel it cutting into that mo- yeah. like those two ships yeah. colliding. I think it was such a fuck yeah moment. Yeah. But, yeah. but also like so so well done too because it's slow. It's not like it's a boom boom everything has to go. It's like oh oh is this gonna work? Oh it worked. Oh shit that's insane. And then as it bangs in the other one and they start going into the shield and it's just it's the the sheer volume of it takes the shield. Out. I want to name my Honda cool. Civic the ha- the Hammerhead Corvette. Hell yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a cool name, that's dude. A, do it. It's one of the cool coolest name. names in the Star do Wars it. universe. Hammerhead yeah. Civic. I drive a Honda <laughs> like my father before me. <laughs> I drive a Honda like my father before me. Uh, let's see. Uh, back down on the surface, Baze this goes out with a bang. Uh, gets grenaded, which is uh, sad, but he takes all, all the all the Death Troopers with him. Uh, as Jin finishes climbing up, she has to do a little juke move where the thing's like... <laughs> I hate that. that like, why? Such a, so why? Stupid. Why? Why? I, one of my biggest problems of like, what a like, tropey feeling like, oh, hey, this is like a 70s movie. And it's like... No, even then they didn't do these stupid things of like, oh, I got a time, right? I, I right. Yeah, you just feel like at some point there's a safety coordinator for the em- the Empire that was high as fuck when all this shit. He's like, that's someone can make it through. It's three seconds. OSHA is like, bro, you can't have that. It's like, it's like is that ADA compliant? Who gives a yeah. shit? Like Bowser designed this part of yeah. the shit. Yeah. It's such a dumb video game. Yeah, thing. I, I feel like this is a moment that like I wish it was cut. Yeah. I wish that it's they, very groany. Yeah. 
Mm. Uh, once outside, she plugs the hard drive in, but before the transmission can be sent, one more obstacle. She has to first align the disc, so she climbs out onto the world's smallest platform to do just that, and you think it's going to be a problem, but no, she just does it pretty yeah. easily. And as she does, of course, the TIE fighter uh, attacks the platform, and she almost gets knocked off, um, but she doesn't. Up in space, Radius uses, uh, this is where he, uh, Radius uses the hammerhead, pushes it in, whatever. Uh, Jin climbs back up, and she's confronted with Credit who holds her at gunpoint. Uh, the shield is still up. He says, you'll never get the plans through, and all I've lost is time. And then Cassian says, time, and also I'm going to shoot you in the back. And Cassian's there, and he shoots him. Yeah. But does he kill him? You've I also really lost know. your heart no, rate. Yeah. Yeah. Heart yeah. Uh, no, he doesn't kill him yet, uh, which I, I'm super glad, because I love him looking up and seeing the Death Star, seen. and it being like, hey, the weapon the made thing of you own created. destruction. Yeah. Yeah. It's, cool. uh, it's my favorite shot in the movie. Cool yeah. for a visual, like, visual moment. Dumb for the characters, and this is the only time these characters make a choice where I'm like, "What are you fucking? What are you in a See, fucking James Bond movie? Kill him! Like you shot him in the shoulder. Walk over and I like this is a guy that you can't. What if he got out? What if he got away? Well, I think he knows the plans are out. You know what I mean? I don't but know. He doesn't know where the flaw is. Shoot him in the back. Go ahead. Yeah. Why would you leave him alive? They just what? go. He just goes. No, they just leave him. Why? Yeah. Well, Jin did tell. I mean, well, don't they see the Death Star at this point? Or no, yeah, but that's again, a, he's but still like, like knocked. Granted, they might look out yeah. and be like, oh, this thing's going to kill us. But that's a pretty big leap. What if it didn't? Then this mm. guy's alive? Mm. This mm. guy's a massive, massive, like, leader of this, of this, uh, your enemy. You fucking kill him. I, I just feel like they're kind of... I just kind hate of, when they do that. I, yeah, I, I agree. But I, I, I do think that, like, in the heat of the moment, they are more worried about making sure that message transmits out and that everything that they're doing is worth something. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if he survives as much as, like, they... Like uh, the rebellion needs to have these plans. Uh, Jin rushes over and sends the transmission as high above them. The Star Destroyer crashes into the shield gate, taking it down just in the nick of time. Admiral Radis receives the transmission, and a second later, they send something big coming out of hyperspace on the other side of the planet. It's the Death Star. <sighs> Uh, Tarkin orders them to fire on Scarif. Uh, the blast is generated and hits nearby. Uh, they, I think they did. They miss the city. Is that what happened by accident? I don't know. I, I don't. That was a weird thing, but I think it was so that like the laser beam that came down blows up the top of the tower, which is where the dude's at. Mm. Where uh, oh, so it's like yeah. an angled thing. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I don't think they did that on purpose. But it also doesn't matter. I feel like, like the yeah. explosion blast it is just big a movie that, shit. Yeah. I think it's movie shit plot yeah. armor. Let's give them enough time to say goodbye to sure. these characters yeah. before yeah. we die. Uh, so the blast hits and a nuclear wave uh, starts raging toward the Citadel Tower. Uh, Radis immediately orders the fleet to jump to hyperspace, and most do except for one poor fucking ship <laughs> that just jumps right into <laughs> Vader's Star Destroyer as it comes out of hyperspace. Yeah, so what a great so visual. What a great visual. Uh, down on the surface. Uh, okay, uh, so we see Vader. We get another scene with him where he orders immediately the men to prepare a boarding party. He's like, we got to get on top of that ship. Get those plans. Uh, down, let's see, uh, down on the surface, Jin and Cassian share one final moment. This is where she go- he looks over and says, your father would be proud of you. And they hug. And they just hug mm-hmm. as, Very the, human. as the power engulfs them. That's it. So I love the the look of the the blast coming to them, the music, like everything about the colors and stuff and how they are. Everything is so great. I don't love the look of when it overcomes them. The final shot. Yeah. Because yeah, like you see bad. like Diego Luna's eye open and it's really... It's just a weird look. It yeah. looks weird, and I feel like it, I don't know what they could have done to make it not look weird because they made the choice to make it so bright I think and like it, that we could see everything. I feel like they would have had. To it would have been cool things. if it had the, the brightness had silhouetted them out, um, so you don't see any of that. But I think the the way to fix it, we had like an opposite problem for the last episode or whatever for Force Awakens, where the last shot of that movie is like a weird kind of like far away shot. I think something like that actually would have worked here because the not actually seeing them being engulfed, but maybe like a far away shot of seeing like where they were would have worked because it's the emotion of like l- like yeah. letting go and they're not mm-hmm. here anymore. I think that would have been a way better call mm-hmm. than whatever the fuck this shot was. Uh, up in space, of course, uh, the alliance, one of the alliance ships has received the plans uh, and they are transferring it over to another hard drive. Once complete, the crew member goes, cool, let's get the fuck out of here. But guess what? The door is stuck. And there's a little crack open. He's like, we got to get this door open. And then... Mm-mm. And we get it. Silence for a second. All the guys look back because they feel something, and you hear it. And that, this is the coolest scene ever put on. Yep. Film. I mean, that, that. that's just a hard fact. It doesn't need to be in this movie. I'm so but happy I'm that, so it was. Glad that it was. So happy. It's one of those things that you can't even believe that they put it in a movie. Yeah. yeah oh my god. That's Where so true. I, 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 it's such a fan fiction sort of thing that this is a actually seeing scene, it yeah. on screen 
ha- has blown my mind and will blow my mind every time I watch this movie. I think it's phenomenal. This works to me as an epilogue to Rogue One. It works as a prologue to A New Hope. It's mm-hmm. such a unique thing that I, I can't remember another movie that has something that this movie totally could have the, the blast comes out in there. there credits right yeah. mm-hmm. and I feel like that I would have been satisfied with that this bit to me I feel like is so perfect and so unique to so what awesome. this type of prequel allows and uh, the coolest fucking thing that I, I had to confirm because I could have been after credits it, though <laughs> but I, I, no, wanted I, lo- to, I loved it to this look, way that would have been cool too yeah. uh, that I wanted to, to confirm is the music that's playing it's just tones that play and they're real mm. slow it's the Imperial March Oh, that's cool. <sighs> yeah. Real slow. Really so slow. cool. Uh, like, the, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, this, it's so hard not to immediately start A New Hope just because it transitions so smoothly. And, like, you're right. I, I don't know that I've seen another movie that sets things up so perfectly and, like, gives us a view that we've never seen before and just gets us all hyped. Uh, really quick, another uh, quick thing. Sam Witwer is the guy who yells "Open fire!" If you don't know, Sam Witwer was oh, the cool. one who Force played Unleashed. Uh, uh, Force Unleashed and uh, Star Killer. Yeah. Uh, he's the one who yells "Open fire!" in that scene. It's it's really cool because oh, I like those really games, cool. and I think that's a cool callback to like bring him back just for that little yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. That is that, but like, let's for one second talk about the choreography yep. here, okay? <sighs> because he the open fire. He starts immediately slow deflecting. Walking. Just deflecting yeah. and slow walking, okay? But again, grabs one guy. You look at the guys, it's like, it, uh, you four shoot at his head, you four shoot his legs. Doesn't matter, <laughs> right? No, you know but I mean? it, does, it doesn't we, matter. We because get that w- point, though. Yeah. We get the point where they're all shooting, and he just goes like this, and they all lose their guns. Yeah. No, there's a weird thing he does, and I couldn't figure out what he does. But So the first guy, he pulls toward him, sticks to the ceiling, and as he as he passes Walks the guy, cuts him in half. So and then, cool. At that point, I would have been like this. Blaster to my own temple. <laughs> I don't want this. Yeah, I don't want this, right? This. Then the other guys are shooting at him, and, w- and he stops one of them with his hand, but I think he pushes the bolt back into the guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. pulls all their guns toward him, hacks them all. The last guy finally goes, fuck it. Hey, get over here and take this. And as he, got, as he hands the other person, <laughs> you see the... The blade goes Camera through his cut. chest. Oh my god! Through the door. So good. And it's terrifying. And then the door Dude. opens. By the way, because like, because I think he might as either force open yeah. or whatever. I, I love that they, it just keeps. It's not just that hallway. Yeah. He kept fighting. Well, he kept through. fucking everyone. <laughs> and then they run it finally over to the last door. Give it to the guy. Door closes, and the shit goes. Launch, oh. motherfucker! Let's go! Let's fucking run! Get yeah. run! Run! <laughs> like, I, I love the cut terrified. of the dude flipping the switch, cutting to the outside, and it's seeing like shh, let, releasing yeah. the ship and it dropping, and like okay, we're safe. But yeah, even then, it's like, maybe second. you're not safe. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Like, well, no, because they're not safe because immediately the next line we get after that. So we see Vader, as the ship's moving out, we see him, like, standing there, like, so in the launch. Imagine grab the ship or some <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> I thought he was going to do that. But we see him, that's a great visual, too, where his cape's just, like, kind of a little flowing, but not really. But then, like, but you have to imagine there's a force field, but he's, like, he's watching it as it's just going out in space, and he's like, fuck. And then on the ship, the guy immediately goes, prepare the escape pods. Because we're going to get boarded. Like, we got to get the fuck out of here. Runs it over to, to the command area. Opens it up. And who do we see? Princess Leia there. She, she's like, ma'am, the plans are here. What are they? And as we as the camera turns and we see her terrible face. Uh, just terrible <laughs> it's, face animation. It's not it's that so bad. bad. It's pretty it's bad. bad. It's way bad. worse than Tarkin. Uh, and worse. it's so sad because what she says next is so good. But Such I just can't line. get past it. She goes, hey, guys, what, what, are they, what is this? And she goes, hope. Oh, it's so beautiful. That ends. Um, really Love quick, the, the one thing that I want to ask really quick is this movie closes one storytelling gap with the whole, like, giving a reason why the uh, Death Star has this vulnerability. But doesn't it kind of, it's not an important one, but I've always thought it was weird that in A New Hope, we get the storytelling B or Darth Vader's like, we detected that a transmission was sent to this ship specifically. That's why we know you guys have something. But that's not actually how it happened. Well, the they, ship was docked inside the ship they got the transmission. Yeah, but I feel uh, it, it, it's, it's less of that, but it was, it's more of like he saw, he literally saw the ship. So I don't know. It's just like a weird, weird yeah. little thing. It's not important, when but I've always thought that was interesting. When you jump to hyperspace, there's no rules. You know what I mean? That's yeah. true. I mean, that's a good point, though, because he was like Leia played Corey with him. Yeah. And he's like, and you got the sense that he's like, I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure she's lying to me. Yeah. But you're right. In depth, like, in, in, without like, a shadow of a doubt, he knows the plans are on there. Yeah. Because he the just killed 50 people of, getting to that fucking ship. And I know that, like, because it's weird of, like, that movie came out in 77, we're doing this now, but in the whole story of things, he could have been like, I fucking saw you guys fly away, you I dumb pieces of shit. I was just there. I was yeah. just there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of this. But while they're writing, but while they're thinking up these story beats and like these plot holes and how they like fit certain puzzle pieces in, 
at, at a point, do you just say, yeah, but this scene is way too fucking cool. You have to <laughs> <laughs> have it in there. Right? You, know? I, you have to have it. The Leia <laughs> thing to me much. is I, I agree that it lasts like too long. I don't think she looks that bad when you just first see her, but I, I do think it should have cut quicker. But to me, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Like to me, seeing her is worth it. Where Absolutely. I seeing her just from behind, I think would have been weird. Yeah, I don't think would have played because we I, needed to I hear her. Wish, I agree with you, and I think we needed to see a little bit of her face in order to really feel the impact of it. But mm-hmm. I think we should have seen a little. I think she should have turned. They should have not. Yes. Would have been in to the other side. Yes. If she could have just turned and said, "Just oh, enough, just enough that we yep. get that." Okay, we see a little bit of her skin. We know it's supposed to be Leia. But the, when they turn to her completely and we stay on that shot, it's just not done well enough. It's it so takes vulnerable. you immediately out of it. One hundred percent. And I don't. It's so sad because everything for that last five minutes of the movie is so intense. We get there and like it's just a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, but yeah. how good it is the still message? gets me so fucking. Yeah, hard that's great. Like, but I, like having her is such a hype, cool moment. It's just yeah. I wish the animation was better or done differently, specifically done differently. Yep. All right, let's do a little bit of uh seven syllables in the yeah. middle. There we go. We need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. I like you. Haiku in review. Come on with me. I like you. What? I don't know what. Come home with me. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your <laughs> reviews in haiku form just like Sneecher did. Sneecher, what a fun day. <laughs> He uh, was in a uh, in uh, Rebels, I believe. He was one of the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> These were the droid cameos yeah. that they made. Uh, Jin gave Rebels hope. Rebels gave Leia the plans. Darth gave Rebels death. I like Jin it. gave yeah, Rebels good. hope. Dance. Rebels gave Leia the plans. Darth, okay, that's cool. That's cool. I like it. Uh, Gage says, "Cassian, don't give a fuck." DGA app is what he said. Although I guess don't give a fuck is still Cassian. so, so bully okay. <laughs> De- no, yeah. no, 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 no. But it's it's Cassian Degaff. Got it. <laughs> like that's mm. what it is. There we go. There we go. Cassian Degaff. Mm. Vader is fucking gnarly. Everybody dies. Yeah. Um, Steven says Krennic versus Tarkin. Jedha City had to fall. Vader. In the hall, <laughs> I feel like that first Shit. line you just kind of like, oh, fuck, I need more syllables, yeah. but I appreciate it. Um, and then Tensa goes, Really like the flick, Darth Vader was cool as fuck. Bravo, Witta G. Oh, Witta, comma G. I Witta, see, comma G. That's how it goes. Now it's time for Ragu Bagu, Andy. Rad guys talk bad guys. Ragu. Welcome to this podcast within a podcast where we rank all the villains. In the Star Wars universe, I'm joined by all of my co-hosts, Tim, Nick, Kevin. Why'd you Barrett. hesitate? Because I was going to say Greg. <laughs> oh. I'm so used to saying Greg and all that shit. <laughs> Thank God he's not here. Though. All right. Uh, starting from the top to the bottom, we got uh, uh, Boba Fett and Palpatine. Boba T. Vader's choking hand. Kylo in First Order from Force Awakens. Tark Vader from A New Hope. Maui and Palpatine. Maul and Palpatine <laughs> from, <laughs> uh, from goddamn uh, that one. <laughs> Sidious Vaxer from Revenge of the Sith. And uh, number two, oh, that was Attack of the Clones, sorry. Dooku, Jangu, Annie, CG, Lucas. Where I do we put Krennic? Krennic. Uh, number three. I, f- I feel like he was a really good uh, villain. Yeah, me too. And I think that they they spent a decent amount of time building him out, too, where it's like we got a lot more Krennic than I think we do most villains in this world. I do agree with Barrett that I believe he is number three underneath Vader's choking hand and above yeah. Kylo Ren in the First Order. I agree. Mostly because I think he's just a lot better of an act. I mean, it's not an acting thing. I think it's just more of how the character is portrayed. Where uh, and what he's given to do so with much of a of, of Weasley guy in First Order. Like yeah. that's that's part of the character. I just don't like the way that's. So our number portrayed. one right now is is Return Boba of the Jedi. Fett and and uh, and um, Episode Palpatine. Six. Yeah. You know what? I'd, I'd say number two. I think that the Krennic is fleshed out enough that uh, in the New Hope Vader, which is number two, of course I love him, but I no, don't like how he it's ends. it's Empire. Oh, it's Empire. Yeah, yeah. that's Empire yeah. number two. That's why I would put it at three. Okay, I think, okay, cool. You're I think right. Vader and Empire is, you can't top that. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Which is why number I think. Three. Yeah. All right, we're putting Krennic at number three for his performance in Rogue One. Fantastic job, Mendelssohn. 
this list fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fault. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to blame Andy on this one. <laughs> no offense. But, now it's uh, time to rank. Clean this up at any point. Yeah. The Star Wars universe. Uh, currently, the rankings are number one, The Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, The Force Awakens. Number four, Return of the Jedi. Number five, Revenge of the Sith. Number six, The Phantom Menace. Number seven, Attack of the Clones. I'm going to start it by saying I think that this is number four. Mm. Below Force Awakens, above Return of the Jedi. I Going into this, I would have thought I'd put it above Force Awakens. But I feel like Force Awakens has less downtime and like questions of things that I, I'm wanting more from it. Whereas this, I really, really, really loved the end and I was interested by the beginning. But like I said earlier, I feel like the characters... The, the moments that we get just aren't earned with the characters. They feel amazing when they mm. happen, but they did not get there in a way that satisfied me. I, 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 I feel like this one should be number three. I think that like while the middle is slow, I think that that builds so that when we have those, I think that they are earned. A it's lot not that it's this. slow, because I yeah. feel like that's what like an easy criticism of this mm. is. It's not that it's slow. It's that I just don't think the choices they made were the right choices. I'd actually rather it be slower and get more character dynamics between each of the team members. I think that they focused on uh, Jin's character, like with her dad, to show her transition from like not caring about the rebellion to giving her life. Having for something it. to fight for. Yeah. We did that great with her. Exactly. But what and, about but like, Bodhi? What about? But Bodhi, uh, like we all, I think that they gave us enough for their motivation to make sense. Where it was, uh, what, the Chir, Chir, what's his name? Chirrut. Chirrut, uh, like. He wanted to help and believe in the Force, and, like, he got his conclusion. Uh, his bro, like, wanted to get revenge because they killed him, you know? And Bodhi, like, wanted to fight. Like, he left the the um, the Empire because what he thought they were doing was wrong, and he gave his life to that specifically. I just think that the, the mind-wiping, the CG alien mm -hmm. thing, like put the pilot storyline on such the wrong track mm -hmm. that I think it really is disruptive to the overall building of the team and the team's dynamic of me giving a crap about them together and believing that they'd work together in ways that give us the amazing ends that they get. Mm -hmm. I would put this right below Return of the Jedi. I, I think this movie's great, but I think that it still, to me, feels like a, a fun side story that you wouldn't get if you didn't have Return of the Jedi. And I, and I like it, but I still... my my love for the for all Star Wars still goes back to the original trilogy and I think the way that that Return of the Jedi rounds it out is is so much cooler than anything that happens in this movie. Granted, this is a good movie but I just don't think you get this movie without Return of the Jedi and I don't think the impact of it happens unless you understand what the ramifications are. But so I, as a standalone movie it's just like if this were the only Star Wars movie ever made, it'd be cool but Man, it's not it's not nearly as cool as if you know now that we know that the, you know, it's way cooler. It's made way cooler yeah. by the fact that the original trilogy exists. But I mean, it does though. I feel like that's the thing is, especially as we're ranking these, it is ranking them one after the other mm -hmm. with the ones that come before mm -hmm. it existing without future spoilers. So. I just feel like there's a lot of great stuff in this. This to me is more of, and this is going to sound weird, but to me this is more of like it's less of an action movie and more of a drama. And I like a lot of the character stuff, but I just don't think. I, I just think nothing will ever top the arc that Luke goes through and the end, those end moments in the throne room. And I think that they're just so powerful and so beautiful and so well done that I would rather go back and watch that movie right now than Rogue One. I think the things that I dislike about Return of the Jedi, um, I far dislike them more than the things I dislike about Rogue One. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of all it comes down to for me, where I, I think they both end so strongly. I think Rogue One ends a little bit better. But uh, again, you know chicken and egg thing right you can't have one without the other but uh yeah i just i think the the things that rogue one did worse aren't as egregious to me as what return of the jedi was just uh, you know a lot of the stuff on on endor just kind of rubbed me the wrong way i wasn't mm. a huge fan of a lot of the little silly antics we had there sure uh, i'd put rogue i would agree with tim i would put it at number four above return of the jedi barrett i didn't think it was going to start until next uh episode but this is the episode where I start to heavily disagree with all of you on all of these movies. I think this is a very, very, very okay movie. Um, we jokingly compared this to Halo Reach last week, but I've actually been thinking about that comparison a lot the last couple of weeks. Uh, Halo Reach, if you don't know, is the prequel to the very first Halo game, and it serves to not get super into spoilers, because I don't know if there's going to be people who are playing it for the first time on PC. I know it's been out for seven, eight years or whatever. Um, it serves kind of the same purpose in the Halo uh, lore that this movie does for Star Wars. Um, 
Halo Reach is my favorite Halo story, and on paper, Rogue One should be my favorite Star Wars movie. Uh, I think the thing that Halo, the reason why Halo Reach works for me, and the reason Rogue One doesn't, is because we get more time, uh, more time spent with the characters before they go through their hardships. We see them get built up as this team, and we care for them fighting together, fighting this war, and so when they split apart and things start happening to them and we have to let go of them as characters you actually feel that more on a personal basis where as rogue one i completely agree with you i think i like the premise of the story i think it's really cool i think it would have been served way better as a mini series we're just doing one season of this seven eight episode where we get to spend time with these characters so when you have to let them go it's actually emotionally not satisfying as the satisfying poignant. isn't there. poignant yeah and the the problem is like yes yeah, so there there are important moments that I think work for the characters I just don't think that they're earned uh, especially Jin Urso like I, I understand the conversation that she has with Kazian but her turn from like being pissed at Kazian and I, I get his point of like yo I I never really get to make that choice I don't have the the opportunity to make those choices but she goes from like being pissed at the rebels and Kazian and then two minutes later is trying to like do this whole speech for to them because she believes in her dad but the problem i have with that scene is not the complete 180 she has as a character because i get what they're going with like of her doing this for her dad i was just never sold on her relationship with her dad and i think if we got more time spent with that because we know at the beginning of the movie that they set up the dad is kind of a good guy he left the empire and all this stuff and then we get a throwaway line where she's like oh i just rather pretend he's dead and whatnot to not think about it and so when she gets really emotional when he reveals Feels he's a good guy. Like I just never feel that because. Do we know he's a good guy in the beginning? We do. I mean, we get yeah, a sense. I, I, of I that, think right? that first scene. Yeah. He's gone to hide. He's yeah. not. He doesn't want to work for the but empire I mean, but, anymore. But I know. But she still has a stormtrooper toy. It's like I feel like there's still an empire. Well, I think family. that that's her toy. You know, like we she, saw that toy again when she has the flashback on, on Coruscant. I think. Yeah, right? like you, you when you leave someplace, you take your toys to feel that comf- comfort. It doesn't matter. So how weird is it they make stuffed stormtrooper toys? It is really weird. I, I I liked it though. Um, I yeah, I just I was never really sold on these characters. Like when when we all leave them in the third act, right? Um, the from top to bottom, the f- top three deaths I care about the most is K2SO and the sassy robot friend should not be the death that I care about the most Uh, and then it's Krennic specifically for that shot where he's looking down at this thing he's helped made for the last few decades look back down on him and it's about to destroy him that's a beautiful storytelling shot right there and then three is the second Jedha guardian uh, because he witnessed his best friend die and he's carrying that weight. Uh, everybody else, I did like when they come together as a group and when they go out on their separate objectives, I don't feel the need to see them come back together. Like, I don't feel like on the edge of my seat, like, oh my God, are they going to all see each other again as friends? Because I don't feel like they've hung out for half a day. I don't give a fuck. Um, and so that's, uh, that's why. What, Rogue- Jedi, what Jedi Guardian? The Baz. second one. Baz. Yeah, and that's the other oh, problem. The base, I forget the fucking me. names of these characters half the time. Well, there's a lot of characters in this. Yeah, uh, and then I, I think this movie just has the problem, like the same problem as uh, Revenge of the Sith, honestly, where it has a great, cool third act, but it does it's not earned uh, with the first two acts that set up uh, what it is. Like, this is definitely, like, to give... Good thoughts. I think this is definitely the prettiest Star Wars movie. Like, I, I really like the visual uh, visuals. I think they are able to... I think it was impressive how much they are able to pull off the original trilogy vibe, modernize it, but not mo- modernize it so much that it felt out of place. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot of cool things that happen in the third act, but I just... I don't think they're really earned. A lot of the deaths fall flat for me. Uh, and then the only... The question that I've constantly asked myself since, like, the second time I saw this movie was, if you were the executive producer on this movie and you were, like, confident in the story that you were telling and confident in, like, where we're, where we're letting these characters go, would you have added the Vader scene? Because personally, me, I would not have. If we felt like this story is supposed to be about these people, and if we felt like there was a gra- like kind of a good ending that we leave them off, we should have ended there. I think the fact that Vader was added feels weird and out of place. It's an awesome scene, and I love it. And I do agree. It's like one of the c- coolest Star Wars scenes ever put on screen. But I, I think it really doesn't like. It fits kind of the tone of the movie, but it doesn't fit, like, what the story is supposed to be about. And then the Leia thing, I think, like, 
kind of agreeing with what Kevin says. Like, how do you not get hyped to watch New Hope again? I think that's great. I think it serves a New Hope. I don't think it serves this movie whatsoever. Well, I, I think that they do a good job of treating it like an epilogue or even a mm-hmm. post credit scene that just happens before the credits, where it yeah. feels like the movie ends and then just more is happening. And it is just kind of in the same way that post credit scenes get you hyped for the next movie. That's this fair. is getting you hyped for yeah for this. But the, the, those are my problems. Uh, I will. Uh, where would you it. rank it? Uh, I'm. I'm with Nick. This is definitely below Return of the Jedi. Like, this is only above Revenge of the Sith because I think they have, like, the same major problems, but because this is actually, for the most part, a coherent well story. Yeah, like a coherent story and well-made and stuff. It's coherent. Um, and so, this was actually coherent. <laughs> uh, so that, that that's it for me. So that's my opinion, and I will give him my vote, and then I'll hide, hide away until I have to do this all over again. Go to Dagobah. The, for Last Jedi, so. It's got to be great. Uh, can, we, can someone please Photoshop uh, Barrett hiding out on Dagobah? <laughs> Yoda. Please do. Um, who here thinks it's better than Attack of the Clones? We all raise our hands. <laughs> who think it's better than Phantom Menace? We all raise our hands. Who thinks it's better than Revenge of the Sith? We all raise our hands. Who thinks it's better than Return of the Jedi? Me, Andy, and Kevin raise our hands. Who thinks it's better than The Force Awakens? Kevin raises his hands. The new ranking of the Star Wars universe. Number one, Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, The Force Awakens. Number four, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Number five, Return of the Jedi. Number six, Revenge of the Sith. Number seven, The Phantom Menace. Number eight, Attack of the Clones. Um, This Friday, we will be doing The Mandalorian Chapter 3. And then next week, we will be coming in hot with... Wait, no, next week we're not doing anything. Thanksgiving. Yeah, next, next, Thanksgiving. Next week is Thanksgiving, so we're off. So then the following week, we are doing a lot of Star Wars in review. Monday will be Chapter 4 of The Mandalorian. Tuesday will be Star Wars Last Jedi. Uh, and then Friday will be Mandalorian Chapter 5. Ooh. Get hype, baby. Until then. May the Force be with you.